Very good morning to you uh, from uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association. And uh, we are ready to start the workshop on a uh, workshop to develop a strategy for road safety in Sri Lanka, which is a very important uh, topic in the current context. I'm the co-convener of the road safety uh, crash, road crashes uh, committee of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. Uh, let's start the workshop with our energetic uh, president's address. Uh, Dr. Padma Gunaratna, the current president of the Sri Lanka Medical Association, uh, will address you now to initiate this workshop. Over to you, madam. Thank you, uh, Clifford. Um, Honorable uh, Dilum Amunugama, State Minister of Vehicle Regulation, Bus Transport Services, Train Compartments, and Motor Car Industry. Uh, Professor Samat Dharmaratna, President elect SLMA. Dr. Ajit Rohana, DIT Police. Dr. Srinath Chandrasekara. President, Sri Lanka College of Surgeons, uh, Professor Anjit Disanayaka, Secretary to the State Ministry of Rural Roads and Other Infrastructure, uh, and uh, all other uh, resource personnel and uh, uh, distinguished participants uh, who uh, join uh, virtually. Good morning to all of you. At the outset, let me congratulate Professor Samak Dharmaratna uh, the president-elect and the uh, SLMA expert committee for prevention of road traffic crashes for this very timely conference organized with uh, multi-sectoral collaborations. It's timely because 2.8% uh, of deaths in Sri Lanka are caused by road traffic accidents. This figure is uh, uh, two to five times higher than uh, in high income countries or best performing countries. Uh, another 700 to 800 are left disabled following uh, severe uh, and serious type of uh, accidents every year. Uh, among multiple, multiple factors uh, related to the, uh, maybe to the environment, maybe to the vehicle uh, or to individuals, uh, uh, individuals uh, for a higher rate of accidents in Sri Lanka, increasing number of vehicles, particularly with a variety of sizes, shapes, and speeds, definitely uh, must be a significant uh, must be significant uh, and a leading cause for this high rate of uh, accidents. Uh, I doubt uh, whether our roads did expand parallel to the increase in number of vehicles. Uh, on top of that, we see reckless driving and of irresponsible people, uh, and also the indisciplined pedestrians. All these increase risk of accidents, deaths, and also disabilities. Uh, accidents make use of a good proportion of hospital resources and also economy in general. So accidents and disabilities are an economic burden and higher rates of accidents hamper economic development to a great extent. Uh, as such, uh, improving road safety in Sri Lanka is vital for national health, well-being, and the economic growth of the country. Uh, if we could discipline drivers and pedestrians, many of these deaths and disabilities could have been averted. It is in that spirit, as the president of the Sri Lanka Association, I welcome this initiation to develop a strategy for road state safety in Sri Lanka for 2020 to 2030 by the Sri Lanka Medical Association Expert Committee for, pre for prevention of road traffic crashes. As the president of the Sri Lanka Medical Association, I welcome all of you 
who joined virtually for this conference. I welcome all distinguished invitees and resource personnel for this conference. The Sri Lanka Medical Association value you so much. So uh, before I wind up, let me wish organizers for an extremely successful conference. Thank you very much. Over to you, Clifford. Thank you, Madam, uh, for that uh, introductory remarks. As you have correctly highlighted, Sri Lanka is undergoing a real uh, epidemic situation of uh, road crashes. And it's the duty of all sectors to be responsible on develop strategies to prevent and uh, develop the road safety, prevent uh, road crashes, uh, road traffic crashes, and develop road, uh, safety strategies. And in that respect, Sri Lanka Medical Association has done a lot of work through the Prevention of Road Traffic Crashes Committee. And may I invite Professor Samad Dharmaratna, the co convener of that committee, to address the, the audience now with introduction to the workshop and its contents. Over to you, Samad. Thank you very much, Clifford. I think uh, you can see the screen shared workshop agenda, right? You can see, see it? Yes. Okay. So thank you very much again, uh, Professor Clifford Pereira, for being the moderator. He very kindly at the last moment accepted this. Then I should actually also thank uh, Dr. Padma Gunratna, who is always uh, the president of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. She actually is very supportive and uh, sort of very... Uh, Ushi also, so he, although I have said that he was going to have this, then there was some, was sort of not going to have it, but she actually requested me. And so thank you very much, madam, because your encouragement and support and in advice was really important to start this conference or have this meeting. Then uh, I should thank uh, honored, uh, honorable Dilum Mamunagama MP, State Minister of Vehicle, uh, Reg regulation, bus transport services, and train compartments and motor car industry for very kindly agreeing to be the chief guest of this meeting. Then all the other uh, resource persons, Dr. Samit Siritunga, National Program Manager of India Prevention Ministry of Health, Dr. Ajit Rohana, Deputy Inspector General of Police Legal, Mr. Dilanta Malagamu, our brand ambassador, and world diving champion who needs no new introduction. Then Kirti Kobak Edward, who is the engineer and the CEO of Effective Solutions, who's doing a lot of innovative new things uh, to reduce this man made public health problem. Then Lions and Rotary Club, who are members of our uh, expert committee for road traffic crash uh, prevention of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. And then uh, Dr. Krishnan Sridhinivasan from the World Bank and Dr. Rajini Malavarachi from the WHO. And then thank you very much, uh, Professor Anjit Sanayaka, my colleague, a very good friend who is the secretary to the State Minister of Rural Roads and other infrastructure for agreeing to be uh, resource persons as, at this meeting. Uh, and then thank you very much for all the members of the our expert committee. You know? Committee uh, for basically helping, supporting uh, to uh, for this meeting, and then uh, one important thing I have to tell. So this uh, initially, Madam, actually, uh, Madam Gunratna actually told the burden simply. So about eight, nine people are dying. Uh, Doctor Ajitron also will uh, sort of talk about a little bit on the burden, but everyone knows it's a problem. So we had a lot of discussions to end up with this topic agenda. And we thought we will sort of try to get all the relevant stakeholders to talk about what they plan to do during the next decade or this decade, 2020 to 2030, and then uh, compile a document. And then basically, uh, through our president, uh, give it to stakeholders, including the honorable president of Sri Lanka to uh, not to initiate, but support, then uh, sort of then uh, push kind of to do something 
for this man-made problem, where, which is sort of slowly or for some reason is escalating. And again, thank you very much for all the participants for joining this meeting. And uh, I will hand this the mic back to Professor Clifford to continue with the program. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Professor Samad, uh, Samad uh, for that uh, insightful uh, introduction uh, to the workshop, which uh, set the, the stage for the other speakers to expand on. Our next speaker, according to the, the agenda, is Dr. Samad Sirithunga. Dr. Samad, are you around? And since uh, uh, Professor Ranjit is there, may I ask Professor Ranjit, although you are supposed to speak a bit later, as the Secretary uh, to the State Ministry of uh, Rural Roads and Other Infrastructure, to uh, address the audience, Professor Ranjit. So I will. Hope you can hear me, right? Uh, yes, sir. Right. Good morning, everybody. I am going to present on the government strategies for the road safety for the 2030. What you see here is the first recorded accident in Sri Lanka, 1910. My content will be the government strategies and action. And I'll be uh, explaining the how Save Life program is being adapted. And the one slide on the global focus and the way forward. As you know, the, the government uh, agenda, according to the Saubhagya Dakma, government has uh, promised to rehabilitate the 100,000 kilometers of roads in Sri Lanka. And there will be an, a new more highways will be added, completing the central highway, uh, the highway from Kurunagar to Dambulla, and the Ruanpur Expressway will be completed, hopefully, within next four years. That basically improve the rideability and the surface of the roads. This hundred thousand include the including the roads in the rural. Then, as you know, that the when there is a less traffic, people tend to speed up the vehicle than usual and there is a high potential of more and more accident as uh, professor dharamartha was talking about the number of death per day we are talking like the maybe eight or nine ten sometime so we feel that the by rehabilitation of carpeting of 1000 kilometers of road this country might increase the number of accidents. So this is where we are. Some of the photograph of the recent accident. Rate has been increasing due to the construction of the road and the new vehicle coming into the market and the driver behavior and so forth. So what next? It's the question, are we going this way or this way and this way and this way? As the ministry, we would like to see that a number of accidents will be reduced. So what we plan for this, we want to reduce. So in order to achieve this, our plan, we adapt the, the Save Life Package declared by the United Nations. As a ministry, in order to achieve our target, 
we have out of six action we can adopt three action one is a save a speed management infrastructure design and improvement leadership on road safety these are the three action that we can take as the ministry let me tell you about the about the speed management there are in general making round bound speed bumps and so forth that i'm not going to discuss in detail we have the more comprehensive system in progress to implement the national speed limit regulation in sri lanka this is what we are now more keen on implementing in order to manage the speed of the roads when you go to the leadership on the road safety while we are creating general thing the ministry and the government of sri lanka are working to empower the road safety council as the key agency right now so we understand that the, there is no responsible key agency in order to take the leadership for the road safety uh, that is another action taken by the government of sri lanka when we go to the infrastructure design and improvement there has been a lot of improvement and uh, we are implementing lot of bypasses and underpass and many many almost all the cities around the country right now we are working on making the bypass and so forth but another special attention we have taken care is a separate access from the through road we understand that the, this is the one of the point where we have lot of accident because our roads are not the design road what we have done is the usual road except the highways <clears throat> we have converted to a at the beginning people walk then maybe different kind of vehicles now we buses and so forth we improve that roads so then we have never thought of how the this access are coming they are just directly coming so these are the point where we get lot of accident so now the difficulty is the surrounded by this area there has been lot of construction people are living so very difficult to change it. the land is the matter a question is the huge amount of money and that has a problem but still we are trying to wherever critical location to have the separate access from the through road when you go to the next uh, i would like to tell you about a few approaches or kind of action from the government of sri lanka we as a government this we are empowering the institute and enhance in the traffic laws of sri lanka we create an ideal safe road example for the region we keep on improving the red and critical road section of sri lanka when you go to the empower in the institutions and the enhance in the traffic laws of sri lanka we have the road safety council of sri lanka we have the road safety unit of road development authority of sri lanka we are trying to empower these organization especially road safety council of sri lanka in order to be a mandating organization for empowering the laws traffic laws in sri lanka another major short term challenges that we are going to address right now improve the vehicle calmness for the special there will be a special gazette in, that is in progress with the ministry of transport on the speed limit so that are the one of the key initiative that we have taken then uh, we are creating the ideal safe road for example for the region 
we have selected the polonnaru bypass road as a special project by the ministry you will see the design and the, uh, you will see how the construction is been done right now so that will be a idea say prod or modern facilities and everything will be there so after the learn in the lesson out of this one so we try to improve the this uh, the road network have a similar to the what we do what we are doing in polonnaru another area is the improvement of the red and critical road sections right now we have selected the 80 km stretch from anuradhapur to the padaniya which is the one of the highest accident frequencies in sri lanka the ministries are developing the section as a pilot project initial survey and assessment are completed for that section you will see this is the padaniya anuradhapur road as i told you one of the highest accident frequencies in sri lanka so the we have completed the report safety improvement in padani and radhra road that is a28 so now we have got the allocation from this project we are going to part by part improve this road another initiative we have taken from the state road safety improvement program we call is the mahamaga surakuma safe road that is been almost formulated this is a special program on the red road shop safety with the above strategies will be launched by the ministry soon and the before ending according to the global focus and the way forward in the global level raising awareness of the road safety issues and allow assessment and the progress toward the sustainable development goals goals this is the national global level but nationally we are keep focus focused on action especially where the results are made public the law adjustment and activities as needed so that we are we are trying to target on the road safety related sdg goals good health and well being with that i would like to conclude my presentation thank you so much thank you professor anjit uh, for bringing in the engineering perspectives as an engineer yourself and as a responsible uh, top level uh, government person as a secretary to the state ministry of rural roads and other infrastructures for highlighting how the road infrastructure improvement could assist uh, to prevent uh, road traffic crashes uh, from your point of view uh, and hope uh, you will uh, stay with us uh, for a while and uh, next uh, we will move to the uh, the top again uh, in the agenda uh, dr samita siritunga is around samita are you there uh, yes i am here yeah okay so uh, could we go ahead with your uh, presentation okay sure thank you very much yeah. so dr samita will talk about initiatives uh, for road traffic injury prevention so injury prevention uh, perspective will be highlighted dr samita over to you okay uh, i go on i am uh, dr samita sirithunga national program manager injury prevention a consultant committee physician attached to directorate of non communicable diseases of uh, ministry of health uh, as you said uh, i was given the task to discuss about the health ministry perspective in uh, road safety but uh, i would like to share some thoughts related to the uh, plan what we developed with the with the multi sectoral organizations regarding the road safety and we finalized the almost all the the, the plan Uh, very recently and uh, right uh, to go into move on to therefore i my title i changed the big plan for road safety 
I uh, give you some idea about injuries. 1.3 million. It is a lead, leading cause of hospitalization in Sri Lanka. But you know that uh, not only admitted uh, in, that is injuries, not road traffic accidents. Uh, that is uh, not only people are admitted for treatment, but there are people. So many numbers of people are treated as outpatients, and uh, some uh, some uh, people are treated at private sector, Ayurveda sector, and some more uh, a considerable amount and a number are treated at uh, their homes by their own uh, without going for medical uh, interventions, even though they are uh, needed to go for medical institutions for medical care. And uh, we have some estimates uh, develop uh, uh, with the current available some uh, uh, details. According to that, uh, one out of five individuals in Sri Lanka may need medical care due to injuries annually. Uh, that is a huge number. This is our national injury surveillance system uh, uh, that we started in 2017. It's gradually increased in the coverage. According to that, uh, uh, the leading mechanisms of injuries related to Sri Lankan hospitals, according to our injury surveillance uh, surveillance system, it is false. Transport accidents and uh, animal bites come un come under uh, come as the second and third. Transport accidents are the the number of a percentage of transport accidents from the total injuries admitted to the hospitals is about 16 to 17 percent. About you, you can see that uh, falls are uh, it's about uh, 25 more than 25 percent. In 2020, there is a some reduction of road traffic accident uh, uh, the percentage because of the problem in the COVID situation because where people are uh, the restricted movements of the people. It's so uh, then now uh, annual occurrence of injuries related deaths in Sri Lanka. Actually, we do not have a very good uh, database to get that uh, down this one. Anyhow, according to again, according to our uh, current knowledge, there may be 12,000 uh, injuries occurring uh, in, in Sri Lanka annually. And uh, of that, about 3,000, almost 3,000 in, uh, injury related deaths occur inside hospitals. That means before admission hospital, that means uh, on the spot admission and the before uh, uh, during the transport there may be 9000 deaths can occur in sri lanka as, as in sri lanka annually according to the uh, uh, recent uh, report uh, published by who they have estimated for sri lanka 11700 deaths uh, uh, annually in uh, 20, uh, 2019 according to that 32 deaths it is not i am again i want to say that this is not road traffic accidents it is total number of deaths, 32 deaths can occur daily. That means every three hours we lose at least three, uh, four people due to as a result of injuries. This is a huge number. This is, this is all unnecessary. And most of the victims are belong to the economically productive age group. That is our 15 to 44, 50 year age group. That is we, we lose a, a considerable number of individuals due to accidents and road uh, accidents. And when we go to the, these are some data actually to, to see the burden of the injuries and also the road traffic accidents. And according to our injury surveillance system, we started in 2017. Again, it's uh, still the coverage is increasing. We don't, uh, we have not yet achieved 100% coverage, but in coming years, we can give you a better picture about the uh, whole injury pattern in Sri Lanka. Uh, based on this one, in, in in 2020 up to 2020, it is the the 217 is a 2017 is a problem because we started in that year. But 29, 18, 19, 20, the the uh, the road traffic accidents is the number one cause of uh, mortality that deaths in Sri Lanka due to injuries. It's about uh, the average is about 28, 29 percent. Like you uh, you know that there are some uh, certain injuries. Uh, can occur unintentional and intentionally. Some can, there are maybe suicides, homicides, and sometimes without actual accidents can occur. And uh, uh, based on this one, according to 2020 uh, data, you can see uh, of all injuries, 65% of the deaths reported to injury surveillance system, uh, through our injury surveillance system, it is about unintentional injuries, but 35% is about uh, intentional injury. When we go to see these uh, transport injuries, Almost all injuries, uh, in transport injury related deaths uh, are due to uh, unintentional. That means are not transport injuries are not only road traffic, but we consider here both ro uh, tra road traffic and uh, rail track accidents also. And but uh, here 97% were due to in unintentional. 
three percent, only three percent were due to homicide or su uh, suicide. And uh, burden of transport. But the, the, now we observed, we saw that the burden of uh, injuries about Sri Lanka. But I we want to uh, give you some kind of aware awareness about the the burden of transport injuries. Actually, we have at the moment we don't have very good uh, data system to show this one except the uh, Sri Lanka police data. I have done some uh, assumptions here also. Uh, uh, I have done some assumptions because IMMR, which reports data of patients admitted to, it is the best data that uh, uh, collect information related to uh, uh, in, not only injuries, admi patients admitted to uh, hospitals. Uh, it does not specifically report transport injuries as it is. But National Surve Injury Surveillance System started in 2017 reports transport injuries, both hospital admissions, OPD and deaths, and also trans, uh, transfers, uh, transfers also. It is the coverage is increasing. And therefore, uh, I have at the, for, for, for our purpose also, for our purpose, I have taken some average uh, considering 2018 and 2019 data because I, have, no, I didn't take 2020 20 data because it's a special year. Uh, for average, 17.4% is the total number of total number of injuries reported to uh, hospitals, uh, admitted to hospitals. It's uh, uh, about 17% admitted due to uh, road traffic accidents. Road traffic accident deaths again, 2018-2019 uh, uh, data considering those things. And uh, I, uh, I have taken an average as 29% of the total number of deaths reported in Sri Lanka due to injuries are due to uh, uh, transport accidents. This is the actual numbers really what we observed in past few years, 2017 as this is the uh, first year, but in, uh, it, it is increasing to, uh, the, 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 with the uh, increasing coverage. We know that uh, in 2018, uh, there were almost uh, 40,000 uh, injuries. This is uh, injuries, not the deaths. Uh, 2019, more than 25,000. It is uh, around 47,000 victims admitted for hospitals for tre uh, treatment, in more treatment. But 2020, it is not completed yet. It is provisional data. It is still about thirty-six thousand. That means you can see that there is an increasing trend of the, and also numbers are very very high. This is only a portion of our uh, our picture because uh, annually one point three individuals are admitted to Sri Lankan hospitals for injuries. But when we take on that one as a fraction, uh, this is uh, uh, this is. Uh, from 2009 to, to, uh, to 2019, you can see the assumption, as I mentioned earlier, I have taken the average as 17.4. Uh, in 2019, around uh, this uh, approximate numbers, 160, uh, 160,000 people admitted for treatment of uh, road traffic injuries in Sri, for, uh, to Sri Lankan hospitals. But in uh, the other hand, in 2019, it, it has gone up to 217,000. It's a huge number. Therefore, uh, even in our, uh, even that, even though we say that uh, the numbers are thousand, uh, numbers from thousands, it is the, now the actual picture may be uh, even high. Therefore, uh, we, we have to deal with 270, more than 200,000 uh, individuals uh, reported to uh, hospitals due to accidents. And also we projected that if the trend goes like this, what will happen in 2025? It may go up to 262,000. That means additionally, we have to, there, there are maybe 172,000 individuals will be admitted to Sri Lankan hospital. Then do, can we do this one? Our hospitals, do our hospitals have the facilities to cater all the facilities means, means not only the equipments, not only the buildings, but also do we have uh, enough uh, uh, workforce to treat all these. Therefore, uh, we, one thing we have to decide whether we, we, we are waiting till it uh, uh, goes like this or are we going to, as uh, uh, earlier speakers clearly said, uh, the secretary clearly said, uh, that uh, we, we need to uh, have a, uh, 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 to low down this uh, trend. And also, when consider the deaths, assumption annual injury because still we don't have a very good database uh, to get down the, the actual deaths uh, due to injuries assuming that it is it is around 12000 transport injuries it is average if it is 29% in 29 uh, 209 it uh, it was uh, 4000 plus but in uh, 
2019, it has uh, assumed its approximate number. It could be 3,400. It could be right because according to Sri Lankan police data, 2018 and 2017, the numbers were more than 3,150 like that. But uh, we have to uh, uh, we have to be clear, clear about because this is not only considered only the road traffic accident, but this considers rail track accident. If there were about three, 250 to 500 deaths occur annually due to rail track accident, therefore this number may be okay. Therefore, we are dealing with not 100, but we are dealing with 1,000 unnecessary deaths and unnecessary admissions. If it goes like this, additionally, another 1,200, around more than 1,000 people we lose uh, annually, uh, sorry, uh, from 2019 to 2025, uh, we lose, we miss the uh, uh, 1,000 to uh, more than 1,000 individuals due to road traffic accidents by 2020. Therefore, what we have to do then, uh, this is another interesting thing to uh, reduce one, that to, for each one of one uh, death due to any kind of injury, say for about uh, in, in this uh, this case, road traffic accident, there may be billions, millions of risky behaviors. Therefore, to pre when we are, if we are going to prevent one death, that means we are addressing hundred thousand millions of risky behaviors. This is that we don't have actual data. All the all these things are estimated for our uh, to considered for our purposes because without uh, having this type of things, it is it is very difficult to go ahead because we need some kind of baseline. It may be right or wrong. Anyhow. Uh, this is uh, the, the left side one in the screen is a model developed by Western countries based on their own data. They say that for each one fatality death, there may be 300,000 risky behaviors. According to national data, what we have obtained, what we at the, have at the moment, that uh, when we uh, take uh, that, 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 uh, that formula into this one, for one each one death, this is uh, transport, uh, tra transport related uh, one death, there may be 2.5 million risky behaviors. That means if we are going to prevent one death, we are addressing 2.5 million individual behaviors. That means we change the in behaviors of 2.5 million. That is a very big achievement and it is not may, may not be a very easy task as we think. Therefore, it's a, uh, we have to think it's a very broad way. Therefore, what we have to do how do we address this uh, problem? Then we have, before the occurrence of the things, we have to do something. And after the occurrence, uh, then we have to do something. After the occurrence means after the occurrence of accidents, we need to do some uh, uh, treatments and so on, that post-event care and pre-event care. Uh, therefore, uh, as, uh, now in, as Ministry of Health, the, we see the burden of the injuries. We spent billions of, the government of Sri Lanka spent billions of money for the treatment and management of these, not only pre treatment, but also what about rehabilitation, social care, what about the family problems? Then uh, therefore, we see this picture. Therefore, uh, uh, as the national focal point for injury prevention in the health ministry, we decide, the non-communicable disease unit has decided to uh, develop a multi-sectoral action plan for the management of not only transport injuries, but also uh, uh, for other identified injuries. 21, 20, uh, 2021 to 2025, even though this is the end of, uh, towards the end of March, it is, uh, we started this one, this activity a bit uh, earlier, but last year we couldn't do, do much because of this uh, the global pro epidemic. Anyhow, we are planning to implement this one. We have actually, we have finalized most of the things uh, by now. Now it is there to implement. Uh, in, in this one, we are considering only the unintentional injuries that they are predictable and they are preventable if we take safety precautions correctly. And uh, our, they say this is, uh, the, the, again, we have said, uh, uh, an objective, what we are going to do, what, what is our objective in 2025, we are planning to uh, reduce 5% of unintentional injury related deaths. As I mentioned earlier, to reduce 5% of the deaths, we, there may be, we have to do a very big program. We have to address a lot of things. We have to change uh, uh, behaviors of the millions of millions of millions of people. And uh, if we do so, and uh, here again, assumptions, 
uh, we, we, we think that we assume that by 2025 also, if the, uh, if the total number of deaths occurring in, in Sri Lanka due to injuries, if it is 12,000, uh, unintentional injuries related deaths, it's, uh, it's about 7,200. By 2025, we could save 1,080 uh, lives uh, if we can adopt this, uh, this thing. But it is not a simple because we need to know for each and every activity, what is the uh, what is the problem? How many people can be saved if we can this if we implement this one and so on? And uh, but according to sustainable development goals, uh, 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 according to the UN, uh, their target is to fifty percent uh, reduction of uh, uh, injuries and uh, deaths by 2030 but msap our national multi-sectoral action plan it is 10 percent in 2010 the 40 percent or 40 percent less than the uh, global uh, uh, un target because according to at the moment as i mentioned new uh, that it depends on so many things we need to know about the total number of uh, deaths and uh, fatal accidents could be alleviated by each and every activity but at the moment we don't have that much of a uh, good idea about that one. This is I have taken from United Kingdom in 2000, reported, uh, reported in 2000, 2000. According to this one, they have taken, uh, considered so many activities, say one new road safety engineering program. It is not only one thing. There may be a big, it's a very big uh, program. Uh, improved vehicle crash protection, passive safety. This is not a single thing. There are so many things involved in that one. Therefore, after doing all these things, combined effect of all measures, uh, all users, it is they could save only the th casual reduction, only 35%. Therefore, even if we say that, uh, we, we may say that even though it is 5%, that, uh, in 10, uh, 10 years, if it is 10%, uh, uh, we could save more, uh, we could reduce more than sometimes more than 10%, it is okay, sometimes 20, 30%, it's okay. But our target we have kept after going through so many things, after so many stakeholder meetings, we set that target as 10%. Okay, if prevented 5% of transport injury deaths, deaths, this is injury pyramid in 2020, what could be there? What is the injury, what could, what would like the injury pyramid in, in Sri Lanka? Uh, for 165, these transport injuries, 165 deaths, that means we have, we will change uh, 4.1 millions of risky behavior. That means we have to address at least one fifth of the Sri Lankan. We have to change the behaviors of one uh, one one fifth of the uh, population of Sri Lanka. If the population is 20 million, it is 21 plus now. It may be 22 million uh, in 2025. Anyhow, we have to address uh, millions of. Uh, we have to change the millions of uh, behaviors in Sri Lanka. Therefore, it is not a it's therefore without having a very good uh, action plan uh, therefore uh, actually it, it may not be possible to uh, reduce this number by once uh, 2025 165 uh, deaths reduce the by uh, 2025 means uh, for uh, 2021 30 deaths say 32 or 30, 33 deaths in 2022 uh, 66 deaths. Monday. yes right uh, according to this one, we have taken, uh, we have considered so many injury types, transport, drowning, house, uh, home injuries, uh, workplace injuries, vulnerable age groups, mean children and adults. And also we have taken a spe specific uh, 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 thing as post-event care, that is after uh, happening injuries, what we'll have to do. These are the main areas that we considered in the uh, multi-sectoral action plan under five strategies, so five pillars. Advocacy, partnership, leadership, health promotion, and risk reduction, post event care, capacity building, surveillance, monitoring, evaluation, and research. Under these five categories, we have developed so many things. So we have identified many activities. Say, for an example, road safe, transport accident. I have no time to discuss each and every activity, but I will give you a very, very brief summary uh, related to this one. Health promotion and risk reduction, it is the, uh, the, the, the biggest portion of the, this thing. 
safe vehicles. It is not only it is standardization, developing standards of vehicles, and also the uh, garage maintenance and so many accreditation systems. So many things are there. As uh, our uh, secretary correctly said, safe roads. There are so many things we have to do uh, in, in promotion of say, uh, the safety at roads and also safe speed. So many things we have to do. Uh, so many activities have also been identified in the action plan. Uh, in in safe speed, actually for each and I, as I mentioned earlier, there are there should be for each and every activity we need to identify how many uh, how many deaths can be alleviated or reduced by each and every activity. But for the at the moment we don't have much experience or much uh, data related to Sri Lanka. Anyhow, we we are planning uh, introducing all these and also uh, safe behavior of road users. It include these are only a very few. Uh, mobile phone usage and uh, safety equipment usage like helmets and seat belts. Uh, this is uh, safe uh, three wheels and uh, mobiles and also pedestrian behavior and also use of uh, prohibition of you know, prohibition of addressing al blood alcohol levels, uh, sleepy and fatigued uh, driving and also train accidents and also under and also law enforcement. Actually, this helps to uh, reduce the number of injuries not only for the occupants but also for the many most of the time because we know that most of the victims are pedestrians cyclists and motorcyclists therefore to reduce the injuries and the deaths uh, uh, occurring due to uh, occurring among those people also at post event care first aid because we know that post admission care means if a patient is admitted to the hospital hospital staff Take, uh, take care of those people and they take their maximum effort to treat all these. But if a patient is not transferred properly to the hospital, that is a problem. It, uh, therefore, we need very good uh, first aid program, pre-hospital care program, and also for post-admission care. And if, if those first aid and pre-hospital care uh, uh, activities are very good, then hospital staff, is, then, 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 then we can improve the quality of the life of the victims and also prolong the life and reduce the disabilities and also the reduce the number of deaths uh, occurring due to accident. And also, uh, these are the only a very few, but in here advocacy, leadership, uh, leadership and uh, uh, partnership, even in child injury, uh, injury, um, um, uh, injury uh, prevention program, we included certain things, even in uh, adult injury prevention, we included certain things related to transport accidents. Therefore, uh, when if we think that if we can implement this one, it is okay, it is 10 to 20%. If somebody wants to uh, increase the numbers by up to 50%, they are may for, therefore we need to refocus, uh, re, uh, read again this one. And I think if we can uh, address this, these issues as it is, as identified by multi-sectoral organizations, therefore if we, we can uh, reduce total numbers uh, by a considerable number, as I mentioned earlier. And also one thing for, two, for leadership and partnership, and uh, some uh, stakeholders do like to have a presidential task force separately for uh, road traffic accidents, but uh, some of the stakeholders do not like to have that type of thing because there are so many presidential task force uh, 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 we have at the moment. Therefore, as a injury prevention task force or uh, that is injury council uh, to address all the identified main injuries because uh, not only transport accidents as uh, 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 this uh, drowning is the problem, occupational injuries are the problem, there are so many problems we observe. Therefore, if we can have a council or injury, uh, injury something task force under the president or uh, the excellency president or the excellency prime minister, that would be a better option because that uh, my belief, but some uh, uh, experts, they believe uh, it's okay. We'll see, we can do a lot. And also this is the last slide. I'm extremely sorry. I have been given only 10 minutes to uh, speak about this, but I have, I have taken more than 10, 15 minutes I'm extremely sorry. Almost all injuries can be prevented if taken adequate precautions. With a small effort, most injuries can be prevented. And also, most of the time, preventive measures are mostly inexpensive. Thank you very much. I must thank uh, President uh, uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association and also the chairperson of 
uh, road safety subcommittee of SLMA for giving us uh, this uh, uh, chance uh, to deliver this presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Samitha, for that uh, very uh, elaborative uh, presentation. Uh, I hope, uh, Prof. Samit, uh, Samit uh, from the SLMA side, uh, you are recording this uh, the whole workshop because we are generating a lot of uh, information, uh, stats, and which we could use uh, for uh, our future activities. Uh, and uh, uh, let me uh, move a little bit uh, on the, the, the injury prevention aspect. Uh, we got uh, president of the College of Surgeons with us, Professor Srinath Chandrasekhar. Uh, Professor Srinath, are you around? Yes, I am. Good morning. Yes. Uh, is it possible for you to uh, give your insights as a surgeon? Yes. Uh, on I, hope, I hope you can hear me and see me properly. Yes. Yes. So good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, President uh, of the Sri Lanka Medical Association, um, Chairperson of the, the, the committee, Professor Dharmaratna, uh, Honorable Minister Dilu Mamnugama, uh, esteemed members of the panel. Firstly, I would like to thank uh, the President SLMA and the Chairperson for inviting the College of Surgeons uh, to be a part of this extremely important uh, discussion. Uh, as already, uh, the already presented, I think injuries are one of the key reasons for hospital admissions and uh, mortality in this country. Uh, as some workers uh, describe it, it has now reached epidemic proportions. Uh, again, as Dr. Silitunga mentioned, majority of these patients end up in hospitals and it is now overwhelming. The healthcare resources, not only uh, infrastructure, but the healthcare expertise as well as the healthcare budget. So it is a significant problem, not only for the doctors, but it is a significant problem at national level. So I'm very pleased and, and uh, delighted that the Sri Lanka Medical Association has taken this initiative and brought together this esteemed panel of stakeholders to address this issue. Uh, it is more than a coincidence that the College of Surgeons during this 50th uh, anniversary or Jubilee year has taken it upon themselves uh, to engage in a trauma management program uh, as a medium to long-term initiative. So the College of Surgeons have already started uh, its activity to plan out the post-care. As Dr. Siritunga said, prevention is the ideal situation here to uh, manage trauma, but unfortunately, only a small fraction of these injuries could be averted or prevented in the current scenario for already uh, reasons already explained. So the College of Surgeons have now uh, come together, forming different committees to look at post-event care, that is pre-hospital care, uh, effective transport, uh, more efficient treatment and rehabilitation of these victims. So before I wind up, I would also like to, uh, to emphasize that of uh, all the road traffic accidents that we witness in the country, there is data to suggest that the biggest proportion of injured people are actually pedestrians. They are not the vehicle drivers and the passengers. They too are an important proportion, but the biggest number of people who are injured due to road accidents are the pedestrians. And most of these people are in the productive age group. So I think this is a timely initiative by all uh, stakeholders, uh, the SLMA, the government, the police, uh, and everyone involved. And we are very happy uh, that we are a part of this initiative and the College of Surgeons, uh, its council and the members uh, uh, wish to extend its fullest cooperation uh, in this uh, nationally important cause to the SLMA and its stakeholders to prevent injuries. And going further, uh, we request for your unstinted support to carry on this task of managing uh, post uh, event uh, matters as well. So I, I look forward to working with all of you and the College of Surgeons in managing post-event uh, care of these trauma victims. So thank you very much and I wish you all the best. Thank you, Professor Srinath, uh, adding the surgeon's perspective, uh, this uh, important workshop on uh, developing a uh, uh, strategy for uh, road safety uh, in Sri Lanka. And uh, as uh, most of you are aware, we are a little bit moving away from the uh, agenda to keep up with the time. Thank you. And, uh, and to uh, make sure that all the, the speakers get the, uh, the required time slots. And uh, at this stage, uh, we are yet to uh, get connected with the uh, Honorable Minister, who is our chief guest for this uh, today's workshop, uh, Mr. Dilan, Dilan Amunugama. 
uh, but he will join soon. So until then, uh, we'll continue with the uh, the deliberations uh, from our speakers. So the next, uh, Dr. Krishnan uh, Srinivasan, uh, Dr. Krishnan, are you around? Yes. Uh, good morning. Is it possible to uh, ask, uh, come to you? So Dr. Krishnan and Srinivasan is a yeah, definitely the transport and the digital development, uh, the World Bank, uh, New Delhi, India. Uh, Dr. Krishnan, uh, very good morning to you from Sri Lanka. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah. Could you could you go ahead, please? Uh, just I'll just turn the video on for a bit so you can see my face. Yeah. Uh, thank you again. Uh, at the outset, uh, I want to uh, uh, thank uh, uh, the Sri Lanka Medical Association for inviting us to be part of this uh, very very important uh, event. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm just going to talk about uh, uh, in this format, uh, why road safety is very important for the World Bank. What has been the bank's approach in several countries around the region and how can these strategies be applied in Sri Lanka to uh, tackle the menace of road safety. Um, I will not go much over this slide. I think everybody knows uh, the sustainable development goals. Uh, there are uh, a couple of goals which relate to safety and uh, there are targets in those goals which basically enjoin all the member states to uh, halve the number of global deaths from especially from road traffic incidents and to uh, uh, provide safe uh, and the keyword operative word being safe uh, affordable and accessible and sustainable transport systems for everybody uh, in 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 uh, 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 the member countries which have actually acceded to these uh, goals. So um, quickly again, um, uh, Sri Lanka's uh, performance, although you know, in terms of the total number of fatalities, it's very less compared to all the other countries in the region. But uh, but if you look at the fatality rate, which is normalized to per lakh uh, per hundred thousand population, then it is actually the worst in the neighborhood. Uh, it's also probably you know uh, uh, you know four to five times uh, the the best performing countries, and uh, so it is it is a matter of concern. And uh, these are, uh, uh, you know, this is an issue that is being, you know, uh, across the world, but also especially in South Asia, because South Asia, although has only 10% of the world's vehicles, it has 25%. That means almost, you know, out of the 1.3 million people that are getting killed in road traffic incidents, about 25% of those are uh, in our countries. And the reason uh, the fatalities are increasing uh, is because of higher high motorization rates in our countries. As you can see, I think uh, other speakers also mentioned about 3000 fatalities are happening uh, every year. And the numbers, uh, you know, if not checked, uh, they might go to 4,000 by 2025. And uh, I think the 2020 is a little blip because of the pandemic. And as uh, 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 the previous speaker, the president uh, very rightly mentioned of the National College of Surgeons, uh, the biggest proportion uh, you know, uh, is of uh, you know, the vulnerable road users. In fact, this is, a, this is a, something that is really uh, uh, you know, outlier in the region. If you can see the 90% of the road fatalities are vulnerable road users, 30% being um, you know, pedestrians, and fifth, more than 50, more than half of the fatalities are motorcyclists. So these, this is uh, an area that probably needs to be looked at more uh, you know, in more focus, uh, you know, to, to reduce the pedestrian and the uh, uh, cyclist and motorcyclist fatalities, because these are, uh, these are, again, the, the reason is these are the poorest of the poor. And uh, some uh, uh, statistics indicate that uh, uh, um, these lead to higher poverty, distress, apart from the physical distress and trauma, uh, they push a lot of people into more poverty. And this is the reason why bank is also interested because banks, one of the goals is to reduce the number of people in poverty rather than increase it. Um, so what are some of the critical issues? Uh, and I will not go over much because I think these are all again, well-known, but the increasingly these are being driven by motorization. Uh, the, the data shows that 70% of the crashes involve low-income commuters pushing them again into more poverty 
almost again one of the earlier speakers had rightly said mostly two thirds or more are in the productive age group which is a huge dent to the economy of the country uh, and motorcycle pedestrian crashes which is also very interesting and in, uh, it is probably one of the uh, uh, again not very common across these countries but for motorcycle pedestrian crashes in sri lanka are causing about 40% of the pedestrian pedestrian fatalities um so there is a national council for road safety but uh, but there has been very weak monitoring uh, of uh, road safety results uh, uh, you know according to the uh, auditor general of uh, of sri lanka in in one of the reports earlier uh, there is there is a national level there's no national level crash database which is needed for data driven interventions uh, there is a database that is being developed uh, i think it has been piloted but it has not been fully rolled out and uh, in the vehicle side uh, 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 although it has very good import uh, regulations sri lanka is probably one of the best import regulations but it has not acceded to any of the recommended un road safety conventions on uh, on vehicle safety so these are some of the issues that might be uh, good to look at and what are some of the critical infrastructure issues i think again one of the earlier speakers had mentioned you know uh, the some of the issues are there's a informal road safety unit in the in the rda but it is not equipped with any of the mandate or resources uh, on 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 safety uh, only half of the uh, one of the surveys from by uns cap in 2017 had uh, compared about uh, a list of 15 to 17 countries and only out of 35 uh, required or best practice road safety infrastructure features or facilities only uh, half of them are actually being used uh, it's good to see that uh, you know, uh, uh, that that the pilot project now that is being done and uh, some of the uh, other uh, things that are being done uh, th there are going to be some of these clear zones and uh, some of these other uh, 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 you know very very critical measures that are needed in in uh, road safety including electronic monitoring and electronic enforcement uh, bicycle lanes again i was very happy to see that bicycle and motorcycle lanes are being uh, the um, uh, thought about the secretary of ministry of health had uh, mentioned this this is very good uh, it is already being done in several countries in like vietnam and malaysia and i will show you some pictures in a little bit um, then uh, very important in the 100000 km uh, project that is being taken up the program that road safety is incorporated into those improvements because this is often the case in all our countries where uh, the overriding emphasis on connectivity and budget and capacity constraints the first casualty is the road safety uh, finally road safety audits uh, are not mandatory and this is an issue both because of capacity as well as uh, you know the uh, constraints of not having the right codes and inspections are or only carried out on on only some new projects so uh, what what is doable uh, from you know you can see this is a just a, an example i wanted to show 3000 might seem um, a very insurmountable task but if you look at this railroad employee deaths in, in america in 1910 or 1920 uh these have come down to initially they you know it was also taken as granted now after uh, almost 100 years you can see that these have come down to almost zero so similarly example of australia which had uh, which had a much higher fatality rate in fact it was 30 per 100000 in 1970 and it has come down to almost 4 or 5 uh, you know in 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 uh, in 2010 and maybe now even better and they had a systematic uh, you know uh, systems and systematic policies at every stage as you can see uh, you know for instance speed cameras they instituted in 1988 and they are still going ahead with systematically reducing it to zero so these can be achieved so it is not a, it is not uh, in insurmountable um so what is the approach the bank has been recommending is something like a safe system so the the emphasis needs to shift from Uh, undue emphasis on user safety which all our countries are doing uh, by those awareness and all those programs which are good but they are not they are not going to re reduce by 50% this the thing is to look at it as a safe system approach which is across the world where you look at it as a system uh, you, you know looking at improvements in all areas including roads vehicles uh, you know enforcement and speed management 
Um, so uh, the the following uh, the strategies are recommended for Sri Lanka from uh, the, these are from the uh, from a report that we uh, the bank had done uh, in 2020 after extensive uh, you know research uh, and this report is available for everybody uh, you know what should be the uh, strategies and leadership priorities to, to 2030. It has been shared with the government. And uh, so some of what I'm going to speak next uh, under each of the five pillars are basically, uh, you know, excerpts from our report, uh, which uh, has more details. Uh, so quickly, uh, what are some of the things that need to be done? Road safety management, uh, under management, the the legislation is very important. Uh, uh, we believe that it is in, it's still being uh, uh, discussed. This national transport safety legislation, which uh, will formalize a national transport safety commission and empower and equip it with resources and staff for uh, uh, safety in the country. And next slide, I'll show you what some other countries have done in this area. Uh, similarly, not just the uh, NTSC, but you need a road safety fund with clearly identified sources of income. The bank reports suggest that you need at least uh, $2 billion over the next 10 years. That is almost $200 million a year to achieving the halving of fatalities, the SDG goal. Uh, so these may need to be augmented with uh, uh, different other sources. And these are just, uh, uh, you know, uh, thoughts that other countries have, some other countries have done like this, uh, using vehicle import uh, tax, uh, you know, tolls and uh, other fees, you know, all these can be combined and pooled together just for a road safety fund. And then it need, needs to be a very good monitoring and allocation framework for allocating these funds. Um, Again, uh, one of the keys here is a results-focused strategy. So what I mean is results-focused is basically uh, everything should be geared towards the 50% result that you're going to get or you want to achieve. So if, uh, all these uh, uh, functions at the very bottom, then they have to be at the road network level for both the roads as well as the vehicles. Uh, you know, very important to have recovery and rehabilitation as uh, the president of NCR, uh, the, the National College of Surgeons also rightly mentioned, and very importantly, planning and design and operation of the road network, which will lead you to the results, which will uh, reduce your economic and other costs. So uh, that is very important. Similarly, for the uh, capacity building, there needs to be a center of excellence, which will, uh, you know, have uh, training as well as research, uh, you know, which is needed, very, very, very much needed country specific research, which will also provide policy level support to the government. So this is, uh, uh, and this, this can be done by having a portion of the contracts for every work contract. It has been done in uh, other countries, for instance, in India, National Academy of Construction was started under a bank project just by using 0.25% of every contract that is awarded by the state is actually goes to this fund. And it uh, it has it is used for operation operation operations of the National Academy of Construction. So what have some other countries done? The OECD countries, as I said, Australia already I told you. Sweden was also at 16.3 in 1970. UK 14. They have brought it down to three or four. All have effective structures. Unless you have the structure which is which is empowered, which is independent, it is it is going to be very difficult. India has recently enacted the Motor Vehicles Amendment Act, which has very good, uh, uh, you know, uh, some provisions, which has an independent National Road Safety Board, which is going to be created very soon. It makes very, very important that it makes all entities who are involved in the design, construction, maintenance, and operation of roads accountable. Uh, it enables digital monitoring of all uh, national, state, and urban roads. And it has a fund for treatment of crash survivors and to provide compensation. Uh, some states also have set up independent road safety authorities. Unless you have these independent authorities, it is going to be very difficult, which can pull up anybody, any public or private entity for not non-compliance. Similarly, it has initiated a development of an integrated road accident database, which I mentioned before. You need that to be rolled out across the country uh, uh, to have data-driven interventions. Uh, similarly, for safer roads, safer roads, this is very, very important. Uh, the, in fact, I will show you another slide where infrastructure deficiencies are the ones that are causing a lot of these uh, road safety issues. So some of the institutional actions that are needed are the road safety unit needs to be a dedicated unit in, in the uh, road development authority, which will have uh, all mandate for design and to conduct audits and research and training and national policy, which, which will mandate road safety audits. 
uh, uh, so I was uh, telling you this before, a dedicated percent of road construction budget can be used, can be set aside for road safety and other incidents. Uh, uh, very important for all these above is to have revisions to the codes and standards and to stipulate minimum safety requirements for each functional class of roads. Uh, the focus also needs to uh, be on, on uh, like I said, motorcyclists. So for instance, uh, in, in, uh, in some of the countries, Malaysia, you can see there are exclusive and non-exclusive motorcycle lanes. Uh, Indonesia even has on, you know, exclusive uh, expressway for, uh, you know, you can see on the right. Uh, Bangladesh has uh, created a motorcycle lane on one of the roads. Uh, so these are uh, things that can that can actually be uh, used in uh, in uh, Sri Lanka as well. Um, similarly, under operational actions, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, instead of going after the fact, there has to be a proactive assessment of the highway network, and these are being done under a World Bank project. These are, uh, you know, every hundred meters of the roads are assessed through something called the International Road Assessment Program, which is which rates the roads on a five-star scale. Uh, so this, these need to be maybe then rolled out to all the uh, 12,000 plus kilometers as pleased on the national highways and eventually all the roads. And very important that signage Marking and crash barriers should not be treated as afterthoughts. It is most engineers across our regions, they just believe that build a go road and then the marking and everything, you know, those are left as afterthoughts. That should not be the case. Before the road is opened for traffic, all the furniture, road furniture needs to be there. Otherwise, it should not be opened. Um, some other uh, things with the pilot projects, I'm very happy to see has been started. Similarly, you know, World Bank has a, a pilot project, which it do does on most of its uh, road uh, funded uh, projects, where, uh, you know, we have seen a uh, reduction in road debts uh, uh, you know, this is how it works. The, uh, the World Bank uh, gives loans to the public works department, but also other, all other agencies are uh, also given, uh, you know, some funds, for instance, enforcement, as well as some post cash, cash uh, crash care measures. And uh, these have seen in, uh, in, a, in a 60 kilometer stretch in, in Karnataka, uh, the fatalities and crashes came down by more than 50% by doing this approach. So this, this is very, very useful uh, to look at pilot approaches, which can then be uh, replicated across uh, uh, the nation. Uh, and uh, uh, apart from that, uh, capacity building is very much required and the uh, crash database integrated with prioritizing your road works, because this is not done, uh, you know, uh, uh, the prior roads are not prioritized for improvement based on how much they are actually leading to your uh, crash problems. But they are more looked at from different other issues, only looking at connectivity and looking at volumes. They should be looked at from a high risk, high volume uh, perspective. Um, so this is what I was talking about. Even in the West, even in the advanced countries, the design concept of safety by design if, if the, just uh, the infrastructure measures are incorporated in the design, you can see the re reduction in the fatalities and serious injuries can be up to 50%, which will, which will just uh, you know, uh, help uh, countries reach their 50% uh, SDG goals. So, and other measures, including post-crash care and uh, enforcement can lead to even higher, better results. You can even go up to uh, 70 to 80% of your, uh, you know, or even uh, to almost, reducing it to zero by, by other uh, innovation and other pillars, support on other pillars. So uh, quickly, I wanted to also show that uh, Tamil Nadu in India has actually reduced uh, its uh, fatalities by 25% by some of these measures just in the last three to four years. And one of the things I said was like 200 million. So they have, they have, have 2% of the plan expenditure uh, they spent. And this has resulted in a I'll show you in the next slide. And what they did was some of the, they have a protocol to inspect and recommend and prioritize measures. So, and some of these other measures, I will not go in detail. You can see it on the screen. So based on this and a bank helped in some of these by having these uh, uh, systematic assessments um, and very important to Im embed into the contract documents. Unless it is embedded into contract documents, no contractor is going to actually implement your road safety uh, you know, measures. And uh, as I said, pilot, uh, piloted uh, some safe demonstration corridors. Uh, bank has also helped in uh, giving some uh, funds for automatic speed enforcement systems. So all these measures, you know, these are some of the pictures you can see on how uh, safety has been incorporated 
uh, in various ways, especially uh, again, one of the former speakers was talking about access uh, where the uh, small, smaller or rural and provincial roads meet the national highways. That is where the fatalities are. And that is exactly the case even in, even in uh, uh, across in Ind India and in Tamil Nadu. So as I said, all these measures along with, I mean, these were only infrastructure I talked about, but they had very good post crash care systems as well. Uh, and based on that and enforcement, they were able to reduce by 25% between 2014 and 2019, one of the very few states in India which have been able to do this. Um, similarly, I will not go much, but uh, I think some of the vehicular aspects also have to be considered uh, in terms of uh, having, let's say, periodic safety inspection of all vehicles. Uh, they have, I think already there's very good import uh, uh, regulations, uh, data systems to be in place to integrate vehicle and registration data, and also for enforcement, and maybe some things that need to be uh, looked at or to encourage the fleet companies to adopt uh, safe operations, uh, how to foster that, that needs to be also looked at. From the safer user perspective, um, you know, again, digital enforcement is something that I will uh, focus on in all this. Uh, that That is very useful. It, is, it has been being done in across several cities uh, in India, as well as in several states. Uh, as I said, in Tamil Nadu also, they are using the automated uh, speed enforcement system on the East Coast Road, which has brought down fatalities. Uh, similarly, intensive campaigns, but these campaigns have to be uh, combined with uh, drives, enforcement drives, otherwise they're not going to be useful. So if you, you say uh, that you're going to have a helmet enforcement campaign and then and then have a media campaign to actually support that. But by themselves, marketing and media campaigns, they have been found across the world in research uh, that they are not useful just by themselves. Um, so uh, some innovative things Tamil Nadu has done to, is to put in some of these in the showrooms. Uh, there is also a community approach that can be done where uh, you involve the community uh, from the bottom up to in all these uh, awareness and safety audits and trauma care issues. Uh, definitely road safety course curriculum needs to be uh, managed as well. Uh, similarly, post crash care, I think uh, uh, Sri Lanka doesn't need that much because uh, you know they have probably one of the best systems across South Asia. Uh, the, the health uh, coverage index uh, is about 62%, um, but still there are few things that need to be done. And uh, I, uh, I think, I think uh, all of you are much better uh, equipped to, uh, to, and I must say, I am not a doctor. So uh, I think you are much better equipped to uh, so uh, say what is uh, needed in the post-crash response. But just from the research and the bank report, um, some things that can be looked at are networking all the centers, uh, definitely the, the transfer uh, you know, uh, to the hospitals that needs uh, some uh, improvement and, uh, and also deployment of ambulances. And this is something Tamil Nadu is doing, looking at dynamic allocation of ambulances based on where the cash crash bone stretches are. Uh, again, uh, this played a big role in Tamil Nadu's 25% uh, reduction. They set up emergency care centers along high crash bone stretches and uh, centers on every 50 kilometer on major national and street highways. So these are some things uh, that, that can be done and which, will, which may be very useful uh, in, in the Sri Lankan context as well. Uh, finally, how do you scale up from these road safety efforts? So initially, maybe looking at small engineering improvements, definitely policy system reforms are needed in the short term and enhanced uh, digital enforcement and post-crash care measures. And maybe these can be done on pilot projects in the short term, and these can be funded by donors such as ADB and World Bank. And in the medium term, these can be scaled up to district and town level, and finally to, to uh, longer provinces or, or maybe countrywide levels. Uh, for instance, uh, if you have 14,000 kilometers, that might cost anywhere from 300 to $500 million just to, just to make all the infrastructure enforcement and post-crash care measures along, along all the, let's say, uh, the entire core road network of, of uh, uh, Sri Lanka or any other country that needs it. So uh, that's all I have. Thank you so much. And uh, hope uh, this is useful as, as uh, you continue to look at strategies to reduce uh, you know, fatalities on Sri Lankan roads. Thanks again. And uh, I'll be happy to take any questions later on. Thank you, Dr. Krishnan. Uh, it's very insightful and very detailed. I mean, hope uh, uh, you could send the, the whole document later on uh, sometime. And uh, please uh, stay on. Uh, we got a Q&A session uh, a little later. 
And uh, in this context, I would like to uh, invite uh, Honorable Dilum uh, Amunukama, our State Minister of uh, Vehicle Reg uh, Reg uh, Regulation, Bus Transport Services, and uh, Train Comparison and uh, Motor Car Industry. And uh, the Minister is ready to address us. And thanks very much, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, for attending this uh, important workshop on uh, developing uh, strategies for road safety in Sri Lanka. And uh, on behalf of the uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association, Ex President uh, Dr. Parpa Gunratna, and uh, the whole members of the uh, Prevention of Road uh, uh, Traffic uh, Crashes uh, Prevention Committee, uh, may I invite uh, on the Minister to address the, uh, the workshop. Uh, good morning, everybody. And first of all, I would like to thank the Sri Lanka Medical Association especially Dr. Pubudu for inviting me on this forum, which is becoming a vital issue at the moment in Sri Lanka. And I was uh, listening to the discussion uh, that was going on and uh, we see that uh, you've got all the a number of parties with expertise on uh, road safety within this forum. And uh, as uh, it was discussed, Previously, uh, the numbers seem to be going up, especially with regard to the fatal incidents that occur with the road accidents. So really, uh, the final solution for this would be to go for a broader uh, conversation with uh, maybe the public also. And uh, I feel that it should... Uh, end up in appointing uh, something like a president's task force, which would uh, the transport ministry, uh, also the police, and then also uh, education. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they could get Great lecture. Uh, youngsters who uh, leave school uh, on uh, road safety and also especially Just on uh, you should uh, conduct yourself when you're on the highways, when you're on the roads. So uh, we've got this government uh, unit also called the National Council for Road Safety, which has been around for some time. And we are hoping to uh, make some changes in this council. Uh, there are also institutions like yours, like the medical associations and the experts on uh, road safety. All we are planning to broaden this setup and uh, to make it a, to uh, build it up into a uh, working council rather than a council uh, that provides only advice. We want to convert it into a council that actually works on the road. We want uh, this council to get involved with private parties like you, and then also investigate each and every fatal accident with uh, experts like you report back to us the ministry on as to what the reasons have been and then I feel as a government we should be able to take the necessary precautions case by case and then I feel that we might be able to bring the numbers down to a certain extent as it was discussed in this forum uh, this is eating into our uh, labor force this is eating into our economy and it is uh, taking out almost uh, half of our medical budget annually. So uh, as it is, we also see a gap in, uh, in uh, previous measures that have been taken. Uh, most of these measures have been, uh, the, the, the preventive measures have not, be take, not been taken. All the measures which have been taken is what we should do after a road accident. But I think there has been a lack in uh, actions that have been taken to prevent uh, road accidents and especially the fatal incidents. So uh, in future, we would like to, since the COVID situation also is uh, withering away, uh, I'm looking forward to meeting all of you all. We can sit at one table, have a discussion, maybe uh, restructure our National Council of uh, Road Safety Maybe you all can work closely with the council 
and also move into a president's task force which will involve the uh, ministry of transport uh, ministry of health ministry of education and also the ministry of internal affairs where the police comes in and uh, also we could uh, use your expertise in this uh, subject to solve the present crisis which is taking about uh, 2000 to 3000 lives presently uh, per annum so i would like to once again uh, thank the medical association and uh, also dr kubul for inviting me in this uh, forum i would like to thank uh, everyone for voluntarily uh, coming up with your ideas your solutions and your expertise to solve this problem and uh, we are looking forward to uh, meeting all of you uh, and establishing this president's task force which hopefully should be able to solve this problem to certain next thank you thank you very much uh, honorable minister uh, for your comments on this uh, developing a strategy for road safety in sri lanka and especially highlighting the uh, the importance of creating a presidential task force incorporating all sectors working on uh, road safety for many years in sri lanka and as members of uh, slmd we are also uh, focusing and uh, propagating on the same idea so as to say uh, we should be able to work uh, in as one team uh, in the future so many thanks again uh, for joining us today despite your busy schedule and uh, sharing your thoughts uh, and the government's view uh, on this uh, very important topic thank you again thank you and uh, and uh, let's uh, uh, move according to the uh, the agenda and uh, may i invite uh, mr dilanta malakamu uh, dilanta are you around yes sir I yes, uh, I think Dilanta needs no introduction uh, to Sri Lankan audience, and uh, he's our uh, the brand ambassador uh, uh, for for and the world uh, driving champion as well. And Dilanta, you have uh, uh, seen uh, the many road networks um, globally and uh, used vehicles in a different context. Dilanta, over to you uh, to share your thoughts and comments uh, on this important topic. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I've been listening to uh, what all the all the other gentlemen spoke about, and uh, then I'm going to talk to you about totally different things. So it's about uh, about driving techniques and what I feel that how we can avoid these accidents. Um, uh, being a racing driver, I have learned a lot about driving techniques and how we can avoid uh, accidents. So I think uh, Sri Lanka, as we all see, is one of the national issues. and without spending more money on other things so i think what we have to initially think as rightly the honorable minister said we have to prevent accidents so to prevent accidents uh, what are the um, easiest ways to uh, do that so i think uh, mainly as uh, when i am in sri lanka i drive every day i don't use a driver but i drive every day uh, in the city and also in rural areas because i travel a lot so the main thing i have seen is um, the uh driving behavior of drivers and also especially the uh, motorcycle riders so i will explain to you why and um, so uh, i think the main uh, one of the biggest problems is the buses and the heavy vehicle drivers uh, and it's it's uh, it's how they uh, control a vehicle because they don't understand they are not educated to uh, uh, actually uh, drive one of these vehicles because uh, Uh, the biggest issue is the driving school where they get their driving license so the experience is very less and they only experience accident when they occur it so and they don't even know why the accident happens because every time when there's accident we have to rectify why this happened um, so uh, like in rain racing we have data loggers and uh, although we go up to about 300 kilometers per hour we exactly know when we have a accident why it happened so what i have seen here is uh, although they drive they don't have a clue about driving so the technique so as i said to even uh, i would like to later talk to the honorable minister and even this public transport uh, councils or members of the authorities 
I would love to take them, Honorable Sir, to uh, some place and teach them uh, how a vehicle uh, reacts and how an accident, accident happens. So they can, when they impose these laws, they can understand exactly what happens or what has to be done. So uh, mainly, uh, if you uh, see uh, any vehicle on the roads, uh, I mean, uh, road safety uh, regulations, they have to comply with. In Sri Lanka, most of the vehicles are not roadworthy. I mean, if you take the buses to carry passengers, they are not buses, you know, they're actually uh, lorries uh, or trucks. So when you uh, modify a truck into a bus, the chassis is not meant to go fast or to carry passengers. And then what happens is when you go, so when you do over speeding, uh, you can't control it because uh, no one can control it because that is not meant or built to be a passenger carrier or to go fast. And um, so I think we have to start from their compliance. And if you see the uh, three wheelers, I don't think they are complied to be on the road uh, because uh, they have never done a crash test. As you know, if you do a crash test, uh, no one will survive. So because there's no safety aspects on these uh, three wheelers. So I think that is why when there's an accident, we have so many fat fatals, you know. So, uh, and if you see the buses, uh, one of the major problems is if you see the, uh, passenger buses that is used by the CTB, also by the private sector, hardly any of the buses has seat belts. You know, in an accident, the most, uh, I think, the effective and uh, I mean to prevent is to have a seat belt, you know, so you don't get that, uh, uh, I mean, when you hit, uh, you don't throw out, you know, I mean, you don't get thrown out or you don't go and hit another uh, seat or other parts of the car or the bus. And also, uh, and also the uh, seat belt is very important and the neck injuries, you can prevent that by having a headrest. So if you see the buses or many uh, three wheelers or mostly what we use for public transport, doesn't have these safety measures. So I think honorable minister in time to come, we have to get these things out of the road and we have to have proper buses, you know, so then uh, they'll have better brakes uh, like ABS and things and they'll have the seat belts and they have uh, uh, traction control and they have a lot of new things that we can avoid accidents. So mainly, so what I want to share with you all is when you uh, uh, issue a license in Sri Lanka, uh, unfortunately it's not issued in the proper manner. So we should have, the first thing is to start with the driving schools. Like if you see overseas, uh, the first driving lesson is on a uh, simulator. And, you know, uh, so uh, simulate is not expensive. So every driving school, if they are to get license, they should start with the simulator. They should have simulators. So what happens is that the country says, first you get on the simulator and you start driving on the simulator. So you get, uh, uh, you can meet with accidents because they are made, the programs are made. So, you, you know, when you're driving, you get a child coming onto the road. So you hit the child, but it's on a simulator, you know, then you have to avoid it. So all that can be done when you control the speed. So the first few days, it's on a simulator and then they will take you to a, a, a premises in the driving school. About, it's about one and one and a half acres. So they have these signal lights, climbs, you know, bridges. So they have built it in, built inside. So then you get to drive there for at least one, two weeks, you know. Then you are, when you're family with everything, then only you're allowed to go on the road. So I think... Uh, uh, in the future, those are the things that we can look into. And uh, as I see every day uh, on the roads, it's getting bad to us. Nothing will, I mean, even if we develop the roads or anything, nothing will stop these accidents as long as we educate the drivers and impose very strict laws. Because uh, as for my experience, the worst is the buses and they don't care because, and the heavy vehicles, because if you meet with an accident, they don't have any injuries unless it goes and hit a, a tree or uh, they fall down from a climb up the hill, things as such, you know. So uh, uh, the bus drivers, they don't care. So they don't respect anyone. And I don't think they don't even know how a bus uh, reacts, you know. So the vehicle, when it's heavier, the efficiency of the brakes get less. So they have to brake earlier, not initial braking, you know. So, and then, but what happens is they brake even later than a, lighter vehicle so no one can stop uh, uh, accident you, you cannot prevent the accident so we have to teach these drivers uh, the techniques of how to drive in the rain how to drive 
in the normal uh, roads and uh, blind corners. Because if you see, even in other countries, more developed countries, uh, when I travel around Europe, so we take all the normal roads to go to the circuits and they are very narrow. But you hardly find the accident because of the discipline of the drivers. And there's no negligence, you know. So they know exactly whether it's a narrow road or it's a wide road. Still, the accident will happen if the driver is... He, he if he doesn't obey the rules you know so he has to know the uh, regulations so i think the biggest problem now here is we have to uh, impose very heavy uh, 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 fines to the drivers and also teach them how to drive so i would as i told you and also uh, uh, one of the biggest other problems is the motorcycle riders they overtake you from the left side they overtake you from the right side so when you overtake from the le left side See, if someone is turning into the left, uh, it's blind, you know, so he just turns in the right and he comes in straight onto the uh, door. So, and uh, as you know, the uh, I heard in the previous lectures that uh, most of the deaths are motorcycles because uh, it's the same thing. They don't exactly know uh, how to ride a motorcycle, how to prevent uh, accidents. I will tell you a very small example. In a motorcycle, if we immediately press the rear brakes, uh, what happens is the motorcycle slides. So it's like first you have to apply the front brakes. But I have seen it every time when there's a motorcycle accident, what the immediate do is they apply the rear brakes. So the motorcycle slides. When it slides, you fall, you know. So those things I have seen in driving schools or riding schools, they don't uh, teach these uh, small tips, you know, to avoid accidents. And I think even to motorcycle riders, I, as I told you, I'm always on the road. They come from the left side, they come to the right side. And they don't have a clue. They are not in their senses. And the, some are even uh, talking on their phones, you know. And so we have to impose. Uh, uh, it's, it's very difficult, you know. And I think, uh, uh, as everyone said, it's costing us so much money. Uh, but uh, I think the st if we have very good and strict laws on the drivers and riders, then we can uh, avoid this and we can actually bring down the numbers very low. And also, I have to tell you about the roads, not, not more than uh, building new roads, the existing roads, especially in Colombo, I'm very sad to say this, but even in Colombo, if you see uh, most of us drive, there are a lot of potholes on the main, I mean, on the middle of the road. So what happens is saying a motorcycle rider comes, he sees a pothole, hardly he cannot avoid it. If he avoids it, he'll go and hit on another car or else what happens is, when, when the road is not even, if, when the motorcycle tire falls onto that potholes, he loses the control of the uh, motorcycle and he will go and hit somewhere. So, first thing I think before we build the new roads in Colombo, we should, and when the road surface is not even, you can't control a vehicle, especially in the rain, because it's not even, you know. So, if you see the best places in Colombo, the roads are really bad. So, I think uh, we can, uh, we should look into that also. But uh, my main idea is, uh, the discipline of the drivers it has to be strict laws and i have had a very bad experience because i being a public figure i can't go and uh, speak to them or i can't even scold them you know but one fine day i was really annoyed and i went to the driver and then you know the first thing what happens if you go and talk to a truck driver or a bus driver they come down with the conductor with poles knives and you know they abuse you with fear so we have to bring in laws for that. They can't do that. You know, they are, uh, you know, when you are a public transport driver, you have to have better, uh, uh, I mean, uh, discipline. They can't do that. But if, if I have seen many times innocent people get abused. Their children are in the car. They talk in field. So I think for that also, we have to impose a rule because they are very dirty the way they do things, you know, and the way they behave. So the children, you know, uh, uh, they get depressed, you know, they get depression. And the other biggest problem what we have is sound stress, you know. Uh, stress can make someone uh, uncomfortable. So you say you're driving and a bus comes from behind and they start, you know, pumping their horn all the time, you know. So you get stress. It's called sound stress. Even I get that. So what happens is when you get stress, uh, you don't focus on driving. You might press your accelerator and you can go and hit another person. So most of the time, uh, accidents are caused by others also. Like if you see, I've seen like most of the cars, uh, why? They have accidents. They are trying to avoid a bus coming onto you on your lane. So you are going on the left, and the bus is has to come on the right, but he is coming straight onto you. So 
people, you know, like even me, everyone loves their vehicles, you know, they, they treat as their own part of your family. So to avoid that accident and they know how the impact is if a bus is going to hit you. So they avoid that. So when they avoid that, there's no space on the road. So either they go and hit on a pedestrian or on a building or on a light post. So all these things are happening every day. So um, what I can do is like uh, uh, I can voluntarily help you all any councils uh, or any uh, government authorities uh, to um, help you a lot with this technology or even if you want to have driving schools, I can come and explain. As you all know, I even I was really wanting to voluntarily teach the ambulance drivers how to drive, how, how to avoid uh, uh, accidents you know because even i just want to ask you all in in uh, when you're a driver the most important thing is uh, to know about the car the behavior of your car how many of you all know what is understand and overstate that's the most basic thing to understand from a car when you're driving and how when you brake, you should always have your steering straight if the steering is turned and if you brake, the car slides so there are small things that we have to teach all these people uh, and i'm willing to do that voluntary i can help you also actually I'm very thankful to the Medical Association for getting me as a brand ambassador. And, uh, you know, it's our country, but I feel that in this country, it's easier to uh, impose uh, uh, regulations and law because we are not a huge country. We are just 23 million people. And uh, if you compare like India and bigger countries, it's really difficult. But um, we should, and I'm, I'm very positive. That's why I joined this uh, program that I'm sure that we can stop it. But uh, if the Honorable Minister is online, I, I think we have to immediately act on this so we can save 50 billion rupees a, a annum that we are spending unnecessarily for these things. So um, what I want to tell is that uh, this can be done. And uh, mostly, uh, I think, the, I, I think uh, we, we were talking to the police and they said they don't have to deploy. They have only about 8,000 uh, offices in the traffic organization but in other countries you get the public involved because that's what I said in my previous meetings that let anyone has a uh, smartphone so if someone is doing an offense just take a photo and send it to police so they can have a uh, 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 I don't know within the data they can send and they can have a uh, server and then we can send it to them and they can monitor because when you take a photo uh, the offense is there, the proof is there that they have they've done an offense. So we have to get the public involved because most of the public, no one wants to have accidents. They don't want to see fatalities. They, they want to reduce want this. To reduce. Yeah. So uh, what we have to do is, uh, these are the things that I want to, uh, I mean, bring to notice. And uh, I can be a help you all trying to get these things. Uh, uh, I mean, I can give my expertise and my advice without any, uh, uh, I mean, voluntarily. So we all want to see that this is the biggest problem and it's the national issue. I think the worst in Sri Lanka, which we can avoid without any cost, you know, it's, it's, the, uh, it's the education and we have to impose rules. So uh, that's all I have to say now. Uh, and then I would uh, want to thank everyone who are here today and also giving me the chance to speak to you all. And I would love to uh, get along with you all uh, and uh, uh, be a part of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dilanta uh, Malagamo, for joining us at uh, this workshop as expert driver and sharing your thoughts. I think all the driver points that you mentioned are very valid and a lot of comments in the chat. Uh, thank you very much and hope uh, you will stay with us uh, till the Q&A session. Uh, the next, uh, we will hear Dr. Ajit Rohana, Deputy Inspector General of Police, legal, uh, but he was uh, uh, Deputy Inspector General uh, police uh, traffic sometime back. Uh, Dr. Ajit Rohana, I think you got a wealth of uh, knowledge uh, regarding this uh, road traffic accidents, its prevention, the data, statistics, and how we should uh, use that uh, knowledge to prevent or develop the strategies on road safety. Uh, thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen, for the invitation and uh, uh, at the moment, as you all know, uh, I'm functioning as the police media spokesman. Uh, I have been in the media field for a period of almost 11 years now since 2010. So every time uh, when an accident happened and uh, uh, deaths uh, are reported, so 
I uh, express our views and the details of the accidents to the media for a period of 11 years. And apart from that, uh, uh, I function as the DIG traffic for a period of one and a half years uh, in year 2018 and 2019. Uh, so first of all, I would like to express the statistics in respect of accidents in our country, uh, because I am uh, not going to take uh, examples in respect of the accidents happened in 2020, because uh, I mean, approximately eight months, uh, the country had been closed. So therefore, uh, we cannot get uh, statistics and accidents uh, uh, never happened. However, if I, if, if I analyze the accident data since uh, 2009 to 2019, uh, almost for a period of 11 years, approximately uh, 40,000 accidents, uh, I mean, are reported to police. So I emphasize the word reported. 40,000, approximately 40,000 accidents are reported to the police. So accordingly, uh, approximately 3,000 persons are killed in road traffic accidents annually, 15 to to 15,000 to 20,000 persons are injured. But according to the, the statistics of insurance companies in our country, approximately 500,000 accidents uh, are reported. But I mean, all the accidents are not reported to the police. Now we have uh, amended uh, the certain provisions of the Motor Traffic Act, but uh, again, a gas-up notification should be published. Uh, it has been drafted. So uh, once uh, it is uh, the, the, the gazette is published, so every and each person should report to police, I mean, by filling that particular form electronically or manually, then they should not uh, go to police station and they are not loitering at police station, but they should report that particular accident. Even it's a very minor, uh, slight accident. Uh, the law has been, because otherwise we can get the, real, uh, the correct uh, statistics of accidents. Uh, first of all, I would like to mention about the legal provisions uh, in respect of uh, motor vehicles. Uh, uh, as you all know, ladies and gentlemen, the first motor vehicle was brought to Sri Lanka in 1905. And from 1905 to 1938, almost... Uh, almost for a, for, a, for a period of 33 years, uh, uh, we didn't have a specific legal enactment uh, for uh, uh, motor vehicles because very less motor vehicles, registered motor vehicles in the country. And uh, there was a regulation promulgated by the minister or the governor. So according to that regulation, the motor vehicles were moved, so that was the law. But it was we we didn't have any ordinance, any act, or any enactment passed by the parliament. However, the British rulers first time uh, first time in 1938, uh, motor traffic ordinance was introduced. Uh, it it is the first legal enactment. So we had uh, several ad hoc uh, ad hoc documents. But first legal enactment in respect of more traffic vehicles was uh, introduced in 1938 by the British rulers. However, it was a, 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 a copy of the more traffic uh, act that was in existence in the United Kingdom. Within a period of 13 years, 13 years, this ordinance was repealed and a new act was introduced by our parliament after the independence in 1951. So that is called Motor Traffic Act, act number 14 of 1951. So the existing law in the country, the contemporary law in respect of motor vehicles in the country is the law that was introduced by our parliament in 1951. The act has been amended for a period of 21, for a, uh, for a period of uh, almost uh, uh, 70 years and 21 times it has been uh, amended. So uh, the latest amendment came in 2019 
and before that 2017 and uh, an important amendment was brought to the principal enactment in 2009 uh, and 19 and 1984 so this is the law in the country but however though we have introduced several laws we have we have conducted several awareness programs so regularly regularly it is sad to say that the deaths in respect of motor accidents is being increased and apart from that the, the injured person the number of injured persons are also increased so what is the what is the reason so what what is the reason so we need to uh, we need to get some sort of idea about analyzing the victims and the accident data so as the police media spokesman so regularly uh, i go through our police reports situation reports uh, by 4:30 in the morning so 4:30 in the morning and according to the situation report today nine per, nine deaths had been reported reported during the period of last 24 hours last week last thursday not 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 uh, uh, day before yesterday last thursday 15 deaths had been reported 15 deaths had been reported for a period of 24 24 hours and last friday 13 deaths had been reported in respect of motor traffic accident so this is the i mean it's a very pathetic situation so what are the reasons if we analyze the the vehicle population in the country when the motor traffic ordinance ordinance was in a motor traffic act was enacted in 1951 we had only we had only 80000 vehicles we had only 80000 vehicles but today after 70 years 1951 to 2021 our vehicle population is 83 lakhs or otherwise uh, 8.3 million 8.3 million vehicle population so accordingly i mean the the vehicle population has been increased rapidly so accordingly parallelly proportionately whether the infrastructure has it been developed so that is the question now if we if we analyze the the data i i i i mention you 15 deaths reported uh reported uh, on the i i think it is on the 4th uh, 4th of march then the victims the the, the deceased nine deceased were motorcycle riders and four were pedestrians and two persons two persons one three wheeler driver and the other one is a paddle cyclist so it means that the 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 statistics show that who are the victims the victims are the majority majority number is motorcycle riders or the pillion riders then the the pedestrians who walk on the road so they are and apart from that uh, the the paddle cyclists paddle cyclists and the persons who go on three wheelers so they are the victims but the people who are on board in bigger vehicles like buses lorries so i mean hardly they are becoming victims so i mean time occasionally accidents are reported but the majority are motorcycle riders pillion riders and pedestrians so that is the situation in the country so what are the actions that we need to take so number 1 number 1 and as you all know there is a saying english saying the prevention is better than cure so what are the preventive actions that we could take uh, especially uh, we if we analyze the the vehicle population 8.3 million so 50 Fifty-six percent of eight point three million is motorcycles. It means approximately in our country fifty-seven fifty-seven lakhs five point seven million motorcycles are available, and sixteen percent out of the total amount eight point three million vehicle population is three wheelers. It means approximately. 16 lakhs 1.6 million uh, 
three wheelers are available in the country so it is the very common vehicle so therefore uh, the the majority of the people they move on motorcycles and three wheelers so they becoming victims so number one what i need what i need to emphasize is that we need to conduct awareness programs but not only awareness awareness includes the the i mean issuing license also now there are countries especially some i have experience as a police officer uh, i mean uh, especially in scandinavian countries so it is very difficult to get a driving license so you have to follow various procedures so now here in sri lanka this pro the, the existing procedure should be modified and uh, it should be i mean um, uh, uh, i mean sorry to say, say this word it should be a deterrent one so therefore uh, we can avoid the accident that is number one so number two so uh, when uh, especially when we are conducting uh, uh, operations traffic operations so there are people especially by using the internet social media so they are cultivating various types of i mean misconceptions in the minds of the general public so as you all know we have been empowered by the law the sri lanka police have been empowered by the law to uh, enforce the traffic law now people all the time so sometimes uh, if a police officer is asking a driving license so there are plenty of resistance sometimes so sometimes they don't care police officers and i am i am not going to i'm watch the the police activities i know that the minority police officers uh, so they are getting bribes then they don't know i mean how to talk to general public they use some uh, uh, bad words also they are so it is 10% but majority majority uh, of them uh, i mean they have been trained on various uh, various uh, uh courses uh, and apart from that uh, traffic law not only traffic law ethics customs traditions everything but uh, so that misconce misconception is there because all the time so drivers the majority of them so they think that the traffic police corps are their enemies so this misconception should be eradicated so therefore uh, on our side we have we 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 have taken several steps but on the other hand all the stakeholders i think all the stake holders are uh, on the webinar so their support uh, and cooperation uh, is needed and in addition to that uh, about traffic laws so people are spreading rumors even not only not only the the ordinary people some intellectuals also they come to the media and they say say that a single police officer cannot detect a traffic case it is absolutely wrong in terms of the provisions of the section 134 of the evidence ordinance so the that particular section section says that to prove a case so it is not limited to uh, i mean uh, it is not required a number of witnesses to prove that case it means even what one, one witness is enough so if a uh, now i saw a, 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 a video footage and apart from that a social media messages that if a single police officer is on the road so don't give your license so don't uh, don't uh, uh, obey with his signals and all these things because he cannot detect anything it is absolutely wrong uh, that misconce misconception had been inculcated everywhere elsewhere by various parties so on the uh, the 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 next question is uh, uh, sometimes when we are going to implement the law enforce the law so uh, uh, the people they resist then they are after what they do is they i mean get uh, videos and video footages are published against the police activity but as you all know ladies and gentlemen i mean uh, 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 mr malagamo mentioned about the police uh, strength yes approximately 9000 police officers are deployed regularly in order to uh, enforce uh, traffic duties uh, in three shift uh, morning shift from 6 to uh, 2 or, 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 or 7 to uh, 3 then they are after in the evening shift and night but sometimes especially uh, in the colombo city uh, poli the, uh, a police constable who uh, comes to the road 
by 5 o'clock in the morning and he will be remaining uh, in the road for a period of all, sometimes uh, 14 or 15 hours, uh, 15 hours. So uh, they have been instructed to detect cases. They have been instructed to, instructed to deal with uh, indisciplined drivers. So therefore, they stop vehicles, they check uh, driving license, they check uh, uh, revenue license. So therefore, they are enforcing the law. Uh, but if you go to other country, uh, but people generally, they are very friendly with police. And apart from that, uh, they, I mean, if a police officer is asking driving license, they show it and they obey with the instructions. But here, plenty of resistance occur regularly. So they are, then the finally, the police are not the victims of road traffic accidents. The victim are the general, general public. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, I would like to uh, draw you. I would like to draw your attention uh, to uh, uh, the world statistics. Uh, uh, if uh, according to the WHO, uh, I mean statistics, 1.3 million people uh, are killed in road traffic accidents annually. And apart from that, it means in every 25 seconds, a person is killed in road traffic accident. So. Now, uh, 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 the, the best practices, according to the statistics, the WHO or, or, or many countries, they have adopted various uh, methodologies or various strategies in order to curtail road traffic accidents. So the, the best strategy that I have ever experienced is demerit mark system, demerit mark system. Uh, uh, initially, this demerit mark, mark concept was introduced by uh, our legislation in 1984. Then thereafter, it was reintroduced in, nine, in 2009 amended act, and again 2017 and 2019 uh, amendments elaborated the concept. Uh, our law is there. Now we have a law in respect of demerit mark system. So this is the best system I mean, according to my experience, now I am a police officer with uh, 30 years of experience. So according to my experience, so I have visited uh, uh, several police organizations all over the world. And so this is the best option, but it is not 100% successful, but uh, this is the best tool that we can utilize in order to uh, prevent road traffic accident. So there is a marking system. If a person, let's say, if a person starts from Colombo, is going for candy, 118 kilometers. So if we cut the cut the line at Paliagoda, uh, a police officer is there. He is given a spot fine, and apart from that, the marks are entered uh, to the system. Then he is uh, getting eight marks, demerit marks. Then again, in Nittambu, if he is passing uh, the the Nittambu junction against. Uh, the traffic lights, red lights, then again he earns another eight marks. So if he has committed uh, three offenses uh, when he's reaching candy, so his license is automatically uh, cancelled. Or oh, within a period of one year, if a person has earned 22 marks according to the, uh, the proposed system, uh, his driving license is suspended. So uh, the many countries have adopted this system and we have the laws, regulations, so everything is uh, there, but uh, our infrastructure has not been developed best yet and we are in the process of developing that system. There are many discussions and especially um, uh, earlier we were under the Ministry of Defense. Now uh, we have a, a, a separate ministry called Ministry of Public Security and our minister, our secretary, uh, I mean, we um, we are having a disc discussion in order to uh, introduce this system as early as possible, along with the transport ministry. So that is the best option. I believe that uh, uh, we can introduce demerit mark system. Uh, the police cop who is uh, who is on the road is having that particular instrument. So once the driving license is inserted inserted into the instrument, so the police cop can. Uh, see uh, the, the the merit the demerit marks how many demerit marks that he has earned then 
uh, it is the best system. And apart from that, uh, we have an idea now, the whole Colombo city has been covered by CCTV cameras. We have uh, approximately 150 CCTV cameras covering all Colombo city and we monitor the situation. Uh, though it's, uh, it is the biggest city in the country, we are having less accidents in the, within the Colombo city uh, because of the CCTV camera system and all the times our radio cars are uh, being operated. So um, we have our control center in Peta area. So the, all the, every time our police corps, they are monitoring the vehicle movements in the Colombo city. If there is a road, if there is a block there, or uh, if a person is uh, disobeying road rules and regulations, so they inform the, the nearest radio car where that particular indiscipline driver is, uh, is uh, driving. Then uh, we can rush to the scene and we can, uh, detect the case so that system is there but it is it it is uh, only in the colombo city so our idea is to develop that particular system into other major cities and apart from that uh, other uh, remote roads also because the because according to uh, our statistics uh, the vulnerable uh, provinces are uh, uh, western province southern province central province and uh, uh, northwestern province so the, the majority number of accidents are reported from these uh, four provinces. So therefore, at least we need to have surveillance system uh, along with cameras. So therefore, uh, uh, we need to change the law. Now, according to our law, we can use CCTV footages to prove uh, uh, accidents and uh, to, to uh, uh, it is admissible in court of law, but we cannot send uh, spot fines. Um, uh, I mean, for the cases detected by cameras, so manually police officers should uh, get those cases, uh, or otherwise the police officers should uh, utilize CCTV footages along with their uh, own notes. But uh, we need to change the uh, we need to change the uh, the law also in respect of uh, CCTV uh, detections. So that is number two. Number one, demerit mark system, CCTV. And apart from that, constant uh, awareness programs. Uh, and all the times, uh, so drivers uh, uh, should obey with road rules and regulations. Uh, in year 2019, we had detected 100,000 uh, drunk driving cases. But uh, I mean, though we have detected 100,000 uh, drivers, drunk drivers, so it is not the exact, uh, I mean, the. The, the correct uh, amount. Uh, it doesn't mean that only 100,000 drivers drove vehicles in year 2019 in the country having consumed liquor, but th that is the detected number. Uh, the actual number might be sometimes 10 or 20 million. So that is the de detected number. And apart from that, uh, we are in the pr process of developing a system to detect persons who consume drugs, heroin, uh, ganja or any other drugs. Now uh, we are testing the instrument. So we have breathalyzer test for uh, 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 alcohol, uh, I mean, for drunk drivers, but uh, we, we are not uh, still implementing this drug test system, but the regulation is being drafted. And apart from that, we are testing some instrument. So we are going to implement it. And apart from that, uh, finally, uh, but the Sri Lanka police is uh, going to develop the capacity of traffic police officers. Uh, we have uh, the, the incumbent IGP has uh, increased the reward system in, in respect of traffic police officers, especially drunk driving cases. Then they are motivated, they are stimulated, but all the time we have instructed them to not to harass uh, the innocent drivers, but to detect cases to ensure the uh, the road safety. So I think uh, uh, I'm, I was able to say uh, something about uh, the police perspectives and uh, uh, especially we are hoping to implement this demerit mask mark system, uh, I mean shortly, uh, then I believe that uh, we would be able to curtail 50% of accidents. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ajit Rohana, uh, DIG, uh, uh, the legal of uh, from Sri Lanka Police, uh, giving that very detailed account. And uh, as I said previously in your introduction, uh, wealth of knowledge behind your experience. 
and uh, sharing with, uh, sharing that knowledge with us in this workshop. Uh, Florona, if possible, please stay on. We are getting a Q&A session in another half, uh, half an hour. Uh, if possible, please stay on. I, I saw some questions for you already in the chat. Uh, so hopefully we could discuss this. Yes, I am. I am. I have another other TV program at eleven fifteen. But I'm uh, if I'm able to come back, so I'll be there. Okay. Thank you very much again. Okay. okay. And, and next uh, we'll move to uh, another engineer, Kirti Kodituakko, CEO of the Effective Solutions Private Limited. Uh, and Kirti has come up with many. Uh, innovative uh, uh, solutions and tools with regard to the, the, the prevention of uh, road traffic accidents in the past. Uh, Kirti, uh, it's over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm going to uh, share the presentation with you. Um, can you see my screen, Professor? Yeah, you can see. Okay, uh, right. Uh, today, actually, my topic is to talk about the traffic violations and the accident reporting. I'd like to uh, recognize my collaborators, uh, WHO, uh, and uh, Effective Solutions. Um, so first, I'll talk about the accident reporting, uh, which is the... Uh, key main uh, thing uh, when it comes to the traffic policy planning and all, uh, we need data. So uh, actually we uh, got together with this steering committee in uh, 2018 uh, with the support of WHO, we managed to uh, uh, design the uh, action plan to implement uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, we managed to uh, implement uh, action plan uh, to uh, set up uh, the national accident data management system uh, to uh, record the accident data accurately and then um, uh, generate uh, the running reports and also uh, share with the other uh, legal entities uh, who are doing the uh, decision making and the policy planning uh, for the uh, uh, for the road safety uh, related measures. And then uh, most importantly, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the data management system is, uh, uh, is the system that uh, uh, runs in every police stations. And uh, from the ground level, uh, we, uh, we get uh, access to all the accident uh, uh, data, uh, like Mr. Ajit Rohana said, all the reported accidents are being uh, recorded through the system. Not only the recording, uh, we have this short-term plan uh, because uh, to implement this kind of system, we needed uh, uh, the station level police uh, uh, officers and the uh, regional level uh, police uh, officers to use the system uh, for their decision-making and the work plan process. And uh, in the longer run, uh, with World Health Organizations, uh, we are uh, uh, supporting uh, to reduce uh, number of accidents uh, from 50% uh, uh, by 2030 as the decade of actions. And then uh, most importantly, when you have this data, you can do a lot of things on it. One is that you can implement artificial intelligence uh, related tools uh, to detect uh, uh, the patterns of the accidents and uh, generate intelligent uh, uh, analysis uh, based on that. I will talk about those things uh, later. And then uh, this is how uh, the management system uh, looks like. Here, uh, as you can see, uh, we record uh, all the uh, accidents with the very accurate GPS locations. By doing that, uh, we can uh, analyze uh, all the accidents through a road section, uh, and then uh, we can uh, get all the data recorded uh, in 297B form. Uh, I think most of you know about 297B form, uh, 
which is the standard data uh, recording uh, application that uh, the police department is using. Uh, all the data is recorded uh, electronically uh, and indexed uh, in a way that uh, it can be analyzed uh, accurately and uh, the running reports, the running reports and the uh, traffic bulletins are automated and uh, and it can be uh, shared uh, with uh, all the uh, relevant parties. And uh, when we talk about the implementations of this system, we have trained uh, about 750 police officers for the uh, for the moment uh, uh, in uh, 16 uh, police divisions and uh, in the national rollout plan we have uh, another 28 police divisions uh, to cover uh, and uh, we are collaborating with uh, road safety council uh, and then uh, uh, with the who support uh, we are planning to uh, expand this uh, system to the region also uh, to collaborate with other countries uh, to support their uh, accident data uh, uh, management process. Uh, and uh, the most importantly, uh, I think many presented uh, talk about the data and um, how we generate insight. Now uh, you are looking at the results here. So you are looking at, uh, on the left side, you are looking at a heat map of uh, uh, Western province, uh, you can see uh, how uh, the accident uh, are uh, accident density uh, and the uh, and the, uh, the severity uh, levels, and also from your right side, you can see a road section of the Candy Road and the black spot. How the black spots are being distributed uh, in that road section now. Uh, the important thing is now all these things are generated from the system itself, uh, not only to the Colombo uh, district, uh, we can uh, do that for entire country. And by doing this, uh, the Sri Lanka police, which is the, the leading uh, organization who uh, uh, runs the law enforcement and who uh, uh, the daily operation to make this uh, country uh, make this country a safe uh, country so they can allocate their police force based on these reports and they can uh, get very high uh, productivity by doing uh, uh, these allocations by using this kind of intelligent analysis so uh, we believe by doing that we empower this organization uh, and uh, it will uh, uh, save a lot of uh, money. So when we talk about uh, the traffic violation, so Dylan also mentioned actually he was there from the inception. Uh, uh, he was there from the inception. So uh, what we uh, decide was uh, the technology is a tool that empowers people. So currently if you uh, if you are a Facebook user, you have seen that there is a group called Sri Lanka Traffic Violation. So people want to react activities uh, uh, in a way that, uh, in the possible way uh, that are available. Uh, so what we see is if they have a, a, a to, uh, uh, the relevant officials, so they will definitely go for it. So. So here, by providing the traffic violation app, what we uh, planned was that. So what we planned was uh, to provide this application to the general public. Uh, and by doing that, we empower the citizens of this country to report the uh, violations that they see uh, and uh, then report that violations to the, the relevant uh, official. So, and also they can see uh, uh, what happened to their uh, reports also. So then they can follow it up and it will help uh, the entire country 
to think differently. So what we are targeting is to roll out this system in two years time and it will help uh, 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 us to analyze uh, what kind of violations happening in this country and uh, not only the accident. Uh, then we can see what kind of actions will lead to this kind of accident. Then we can train uh, the people and change their behaviors and we can identify the target audiences. Uh, so that kind of things, yeah, that kind of things we can uh, get from this kind of application. So in that case, these applications should be very, uh, very user friendly and very, uh, uh, very uh, easy to use. So, so I'm showing you a small video about the uh, application uh, that we currently uh, developed uh, for this uh, national rollout. It is very easier to use then people can uh, just uh, uh, upload their videos and then uh, they can see what really happened to their uh, 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 report. So. As you can see, just tapping it, you can just record the video and then you can uh, update it to the uh, relevant authorities. So likewise, uh, we believe by uh, implementing uh, the technology uh, driven solutions, we can empower both the police and, uh, and also we can empower the citizens. Most importantly, as a country, we can empower all the citizens and then the police and the other authorities can uh, uh, can do a better job because everybody is thinking uh, in a positive manner about these uh, uh, changes. So thank you very much. Uh, so I'm open to any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Kirti, uh, for sharing that uh, innovative uh, knowledge about that innovative tool, that small device, and uh, very practical. And uh, please hold on. I mean, uh, we'll be having the Q and A session after another one more speech, and uh, that speech will be delivered by uh, Dr. Virjini Malavarachi. And uh, Kirti was telling about the WHO support that we gain uh, to develop uh, this uh, road safety. Uh, tool. And uh, Dr. Virginia will expand on the WHO uh, activities and WHO input on this, uh, the whole uh, perspective of the health sector as well. So Dr. Virginia Malavarachi is the National uh, Professional Officer in CD WHO uh, Colombo. And over to you, Dr. Virginia. Uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Let me share my screen. First, so WHO strategies for road safety 2020, 2030. Uh, since the previous speakers discussed in details about the uh, burden and the strategies to be adopted in Sri Lanka, I will not be uh, discussing in detail, but I will elaborate uh, on the main points again. So we discussed that uh, uh, there is a huge burden at the global level and at the national level, uh, I want to emphasize that more than 50% deaths are among vulnerable road users. Those are pedestrians, cyclists, and motorcyclists. Then, uh, although the high income countries have uh, nearly 46% of the motor vehicles, but the burden in the high income countries due to road traffic crashes are only 10%. So here we see that uh, as lower and middle income countries, we are experiencing more burden than the world, the countries who have more vehicles. So just to share with you, the Southeast Asian region is the second highest in the world after the African region to have the high rate of road traffic deaths in the world. 
uh, we discussed this before also. Uh, this is a comparison of vehicles per thousand persons in zero countries. And you can see in, in all the countries, including Sri Lanka, there is an increase in the number of vehicles over uh, last decade. Although the estimated road traffic deaths per 100,000 population in Sri Lanka countries, uh, when we compare with the uh, regional figure, with, uh, although we are below the zero average, it is unacceptable still. So what is the uh, solution? So in considering the burden of road traffic deaths in Sri Lanka, uh, the world, the UN as a whole declared the road traffic action for road safety 2011 to 2020. But uh, there was no sufficient uh, 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 sufficient uh, ag agreement and su sufficient achievements in the first decades. Uh, and it was not able to reduce the burden due to road traffic crashes as planned. So now they have declared the second decade of action for road safety that is 21 to 2030. So the uh, progress made during the previous decade of action for road safety and the new strategies are going to be involved and incorporated in this second decade of action for road safety. And the action plan will be launched in June uh, 2021. They emphasize two things. We need better implementation and better law enforcement. And in order to achieve this better implementation and better law enforcement, we need to accelerate all the activities in the years ahead. If we want to re reach the goal, that is to reduce road traffic deaths and injuries by at least 50% from 21 to 2030. So the second decade of action for road safety aligned with the Stockholm Declaration. I will. I want. I would like to emphasize few things here, which was not declared discussed earlier. Uh, it is important to have a very good political commitment if we want to achieve the targets, and they specifically talk about holistic approach because. Without the holistic approach, we may consider only few activities and we may not uh, consider some activities which are uh, essential for these, uh, for essential to achieve the uh, goals. So they especially need our uh, focus for the healthy options like mental and physical health, development, education, gender equity, sustainable cities, environment and climate change. So when we develop the action plan for road safety, we need to consider about these actions also, these uh, areas also. Otherwise, it will be one uh, uh, program without addressing other issues of the population as a whole. So in during this second decade of action, we need to have a holistic approach. So when, while we are preparing our strategies, we need to consider that. So uh, the previous speaker discussed about this uh, SDG goals. So I'm not going to discuss, but just want to elaborate that we need to achieve the SDG goals, especially goal three and goal 11. So what are the main strategies we can adopt? So we have to address main five risk factors. And it is very important to adopt comprehensive legislation. Just, this is for safety laws and law implementation, including monitoring and evaluation. Uh, it is uh, uh, very sad to hear that how the police officers are challenged in, uh, on the roads when they try to implement the law. So I think as uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association, we can uh, counteract this uh, 
myths and we can support them to implement laws in Sri Lanka in the future. So what are the five risk factors? First one is overspeeding. We discussed about this uh, several times today and I want to emphasize that we need to have a very structured program for the professional drivers in Sri Lanka. Mr. Dilanda also brought up this issue and I endorse what he said. It is very, very timely to have a very structured program for professional drivers in Sri Lanka. And at the same time, there should be uh, barriers, road, uh, road structure, which should reduce the overspeeding. And while focusing on legislation, we need to consider that also. What is the second risk factor? Drunk driving. And we need to impose legislation to minimize and to make it zero. This, is, uh, this chart shows the alcohol-related deaths in Southeast region. Uh, and you can see in Sri Lanka, it is 8.4% of the total RTI deaths. So it is very high. So this may be the number reported, number identified. So we need to uh, review this and to accelerate the legislation so that we can reduce the deaths which occur due to drunk driving. Next risk factor, helmet worn incorrectly or not at all. Although we are uh, enforcing these laws, it may not be 100%. So it is timely to think where we are uh, not functioning properly. Fourth risk factor, seat bills and child restraints. I think uh, this is not uh, practicing very well in Sri Lanka. And so we need to uh, implement this and accelerate implementation of the laws without further delay. What is the fifth risk factor? It is the mob using mobile device that is distracted driving. One way of distracted driving is using mobile devices. So we need to have legislation to minimize and to avoid using mobile devices while driving. So now first strategy is to concentrate on the five main risk factors. Then just to show that in Sri Lanka, uh, the average score for enforcement for risk factors are high, but uh, when we compare to the seer countries, but still we need to accelerate and increase the implementation status. What is the second strategy? That is the vulnerable road users. Who are the vulnerable road users? We discussed earlier, pedestrians, cyclists and motorcyclists. Now we have to analyze and we have to educate them. We discussed this earlier and we need to focus our attention and our strategies towards uh, vulnerable road users and reduce uh, deaths since Sri Lanka had the highest pedestrian deaths in the selected CA countries. And in Sri Lanka, more than half of road traffic deaths are among people traveling two or three wheelers, vehicles. So this is very important. As Mr. Ajit Rona said, they are the people who uh, face it road crashes most often. So we should have a separate strategy to address, uh, to address these vulnerable road users. You can see the proportion of deaths by type of road users in zero countries. And you can see in Sri Lanka, it is very high. And we need to focus then, we need to identify strategies and to bring down the uh, rate of uh, proportion and the rate of deaths by type uh, these uh, vulnerable road users as much as possible. Then next strategy is to identify the highest risk roads with high rates of crashes. So uh, we discussed that 
how safety assessments have been done in the country, but it may be in some selected areas. So we need to identify uh, crash prone areas in the country and do, by doing safety assessment and then identify uh, interventions to reduce the uh, risk of crashes in those areas. So we have to, we may have to focus on maintenance of the roads or signal systems or um, uh, maintaining other areas. So we need to focus on these areas. So in addition to that, I want to elaborate that we need to focus our attention on five pillars we discuss in first decade of action for road safety. There are five pillars we discussed earlier also, road safety management, safer roads and mobility, safe vehicles, safe road users, post-crash response. And it is very important to monitor and evaluate the progress. And there are 12 targets and these 12 targets will be valid even in during the second decade of action. There will be additional activities and in addition to what we learned during the first decade of action, but more or less the activities will be same as the first decade of action. But as a country, we need to identify what is relevant to Sri Lanka based on our geographical and, uh, location and our uh, epidemiology of the uh, road crashes. First one, road safety management. So, it is important to implement major United Nations road safety related agreements and conventions. Now it is very timely to do a review and see where we are now and then develop a national road safety strategy for next 10 years. Now I take this opportunity to thank Sri Lanka Medical Association for taking this initiative, timely initiative to develop the and provide inputs to national road safety strategies for the next 10 years. And as I mentioned earlier, multi-sectoral partnership is very important and it should be a holistic approach. We should not address only the road safety. We have to ensure climate change, environment, and uh, mental health and physical health of other people because Sometimes we may uh, develop new road without walking fast. And we, the non-communicable disease prevention unit may uh, want to have a walking path later. But and another unit may want to have, a, uh, want to reduce indoor, outdoor air pollution. But rather than having separate programs, it is timely to have a holistic approach and to address everything in one, in one strategy. Nationals, it is timely to have a national so road safety plan and with realistic long-term targets. I think the strategies developed by the medical association will provide inputs to the national road safety plan. And it is very important to uh, empower the road safety council because if as the leading agents, if they are not empowered, they will not be able to uh, achieve this target in collaboration with others. So at this moment, I reiterate that it is very important to empower the Road Safety Council. And uh, it is, I am very happy to hear that they will be empowered in the future. And sustain funding and, and in order to increase investment for the road safety. And it is very important to support and establish a data system for ongoing monitoring and evaluation. As Keith and Mr. Ajit Rohana mentioned, uh, the data gives us uh, a clue of where we are and where we are heading for. So WHO in collaboration with the Sri Lanka police uh, and University of Moratu and Effective Solution is uh, uh, supporting this initiative. Uh, and we will be scaling up and expanding to other provinces in the future. Pillar two, 
safe roads and mobility. Two targets, and we need to promote road safety, ownership, and accountability. This is our target is to eliminate high risk road. Here the, we have to consider two things: already existing roads and newly built roads. So, in order to uh, ensure the road safety, it is necessary to allocate at least minimum of 10% of all road budgets to safer road infrastructure. And at the same time, we need to consider when we when a new road is built, how they could promote the health and need of the road users. And it is necessary to do impact assessment, uh, prevent safe, uh, unsafe, prevent unsafe development and safe mobility needs. At the same time, what, how should we improve the existing road infrastructure? So it is necessary to identify hazardous road locations, conduct safety assessment of existing road infrastructure and do speed management, as I mentioned earlier. And it is very important to ensure work zone and school zone safety that is considered very uh, important in the road safety management. And when uh, during development of safe new infrastructure, we have to meet the standards of mobility and there should be policies to promote walking, cycling and using public transport. Because now, in order to prevent chronic non-communicable diseases, we are promoting walking, we are promoting cycling, and we are uh, promoting public transport. But if we are not considered this in our, as a holistic approach, we may not address these issues. And as mentioned earlier, it is important to encourage capacity building and knowledge transfer in safe infrastructure. And Research is a timely need and a priority in uh, developing safe roads and mobility. Pillar three, safe vehicles. We have to apply motor vehicle safety regulations as mentioned by the expert from the World Bank that uh, we don't uh, know UN recommendations have been met uh, for the uh, vehicles and implementation of periodic vehicle assessment program is needed. And uh, usually they recommend to have a new car assessment program in addition to what is given by the car manufacturers. At the, so it will give a uh, external review of the new cars. Ensure that all new motor vehicles meet applicable minimum regulations and we have to ensure the pedestrian protection regulations. And I think the Sri Lanka has already started to discourage import and export of new or used cars that have reduced uh, safety standards. We have to promote environmentally sound, safe, accessible and affordable modes of quality transport. This is referring to the public transport. If the public transport is good, like in Western countries, people will not use their own vehicles. So there should be a long-term plan to ensure that like in other countries, like in Western countries, to have a very good public transport system so that people will not use their own vehicles and it, may, it can reduce the number of road traffic crashes also. And application of pedestrian protection regulations are uh, very important in all pillars. Safe road users. As we discussed earlier, it is important and it is vital to do a social marketing campaign to address all the issues, not only about the pedestrian behavior, behavior, uh, behaviors related to cyclists, motorcyclists, three-wheeler drivers, and other uh, heavy vehicle drivers, and even uh, four-wheel other four-wheel drivers. So we need to encourage about the compliance with speed limits 
compliance with the drink driving laws. And it is important, as I mentioned earlier, occupational health and safety laws to reduce potential occupational health related traffic injuries. And I want to mention again, there should be a program for the professional drivers to ensure that they will uh, uh, drive safely and reduce the road traffic uh, crashes. And uh, we discussed this earlier, there should be a graduated driver licensing system for beginners, not like what is being practiced in Sri Lanka. And research is important in each and every area. Pillar four, we may tend to forget children, youth, older persons and persons with disabilities who find it difficult to uh, uh, mobile, uh, uh, use roads and who may have higher risk of getting road crashes. So there should be separate program to address these special groups in our strategic plan. Post crash response, and we discuss this in detail, strengthening pre-hospital care, single national nationwide telephone number for emergencies, and we should not forget rehabilitation for victims. And there is many things to be done to improve the physical and psychological well-being of the people after the road traffic crashes. And we should not forget the families who have been affected with crash injuries and we need to take care of, uh, need to have a program to take care of affected families. Uh, with this, I conclude my presentation and I take this opportunity to thank the Sri Lanka Medical Association for taking the, this timely initiative to provide inputs for the, uh, to develop a national strategic plan for the next decades of road safety prevention, uh, road safety action plan. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Virginie, uh, for the detailed account uh, from the picture side, how the road traffic crashes could be prevented and uh, what strategies uh, we should adopt to increase the road safety. And uh, now we are approaching the uh, Q&A session. Uh, I hope that all the presenters are available. So we got below 50 or, uh, in the audience. And uh, obviously, let me President, Madam Gurunath is still there. So hopefully we could have a active discussion. So it's uh, open to the audience to raise questions and uh, speakers uh, will be able to answer. So I think uh, it's good uh, if we can make uh, a broader question so all the audience can benefit from that. Um, yeah, my name is Kaushal and I'm actually joining from Japan. Uh, so uh, I think it's very important you know topic and it's it's really interesting i joined from the the beginning to the end uh despite of being a you know the the uh, weekend uh, in fact you know uh, when uh, when when i listened to the you know the, the presenters actually a lot of good ideas uh, uh, came came in so i would like to you know um share a little bit about you know the the japan policy and how japan uh, reduced traffic accidents um, so just just want to you know briefly you know uh, point uh, point out that so in 1970s in fact japan also had very similar level of traffic accidents uh, compared to sri lanka and then they came up with this 3e approach so uh, three E's are one is about the engineering. Most of the you know the, the speakers today talk about how how we can use the engineering uh, the technologies uh, to improve the you know the, the the road safety. And the other one is the enforcement. Uh, the the uh, the third point uh, the I mean enforcement is basically law and order. And the third point is actually about education. Now, uh, uh, being a Sri Lankan and living in Japan for a long time, what I see is what, it, what, what we are missing in Sri Lanka is mostly about that education part. 
because uh, our roads and and vehicles are actually uh, even compared to japan is no no much difference but our you know the, the i think uh, uh, dilanta you know explained the point that our driving schools and our drivers are actually not not you know uh, uh, eligible uh, to drive on the road mostly especially when it comes to the professional drivers because when they do some mistake it's actually affected not only the driver but also the passengers as well so i think we need to have a proper program to uh, assess the drivers aptitude you know both the physical and also psychological uh, for them to see whether they are really you know in a in a position to you know uh, drive on the roads especially professional drivers and the other one is actually uh, the, the, the this using the simulators kind of thing i think that is very important because in japan uh, they usually train through a simulator and then you know they learn the, the vehicle you know how to uh, they put the seat belts and then how to operate these signals steering wheels everything they train in the simulator before they actually go into the real roads so i think that part is something uh, we need to look at um the, the 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 i mean engineering and enforcement also very important but education part is something that i feel uh, as a sri lankan being in japan for long time is missing so if uh, you know this uh, you know committee and 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 the the the, 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 the experts uh, can think about that i i think it's really important point so this is the point that i want to uh, mention uh, to the expert panel thank you Uh, thank you, Kaushal, uh, for start uh, road report. Uh, any comments from our speakers? Yeah, this is uh, this is Krishnan from World Bank. Uh, yeah. I just want to comment. I mean, education is important, but uh, I think the broader point is the education. Just education will not help. It is uh, this also has been proven in Western countries. Now I will give you a simple example. Uh, as as people in uh, in our countries we go abroad and we we follow all the rules now the only reason we follow all the rules is because only of because of two things because the infrastructure in the advanced countries will not allow the wrong behavior first second is if you if even somebody does the wrong behavior then there is strict enforcement so the behavior is a function of your infrastructure and the enforcement you cannot change people's behavior by uh, by Uh, you know actors saying things or by public per, you know personalities you know going on tv and saying things it is just impossible without having the right infrastructure and if if the the infrastructure that is going to allow the right behavior this is the very key point if the infrastructure does not allow the right behavior then your 50% of the problem is solved the other 30% of the problem is by enforcement education is a minor aspect that will come later on it is not going to solve your problem it is not going to solve any problem even in i'll give you another analogy in if you build a staircase without a handrail and then you ask people to come down the stairs people are going to fall this is what is happening across our region where we are building roads without crash barriers now if you build roads without crash barriers and then you say it is a driver's fault it is wrong it is simply not tenable so the first step is to build the right infrastructure second step is you have enforcement strict enforcement third yes you need to educate that education has to come before you issue the license so don't issue licenses to people who do not know the signs and who do not know the you know the uh, the rules so that, that is where your education has to come in education by itself is zero will not solve anything even i can give you reports from world bank from a very recent report which says just education without any of these other things is useless it is not going to solve any problems i will say stop at that yeah uh, just to just to uh, you know comment on that uh, in fact even in the the university of moroto who has done a research on this one 90% of sri lankan traffic accidents happen due to the human errors so if the training is not there even we have the infrastructure if the drivers are not really you know able to drive you know the, the so that is the biggest problem in sri lanka according to you know statistics i mean research done by Moro, university of morotu i what i have read so uh, and the other thing that the psychological behavior yes I, i agree that you know behavioral change is not possible but at least the person knows that i have some problems 
because you know the 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 when you drive you know uh, we make a, it's a kind of decision making process you see your object and then you make your brain decision and then you apply the you know brakes and this behavior actually has a you know different timing uh, person to person it varies so the person need to really understand about you know the whether the, their decision making timing is actually right or wrong so uh, that is why and also if you look at sri lankan traffic uh, you know most of the traffic second largest traffic accidents is actually pedestrians why it happens because, because uh, the, the our drivers actually look at only right hand side when they drive and they, they they usually don't look at the left hand side and and those kind of things you know uh, are the things that we need to measure when when uh, really look at the driver's aptitude so infrastructure is important and enforcement is important of course i know but this is something that missing and most of the developing countries have not checked that so this is the comment that i want to make thank you thank you kaushal and uh, both of you are correct i think uh, we have to strike a balance uh, but uh, both these aspects are important i can see a uh, lot of comments in the chat and uh, we got uh, many different uh, join as well professor jay singh uh, professor arjun alwari and many others are there in the audience so any comments or queries to the speakers can i come in uh, yeah. professor yes. arjun jay singh here yes. can you hear me Yes, sir. Ah, yes. Yeah, I think we have to take a more systems approach because as uh, medical uh, as medical people, we tend to focus on individuals and uh, problems in relation to uh, individual drivers and them making mistakes. But I think uh, an accident happens due to several factors which are operative at that particular moment. it could be related to the driver's reflexes but at the same time uh, several environmental factors come into operation for example again uh, if you look at the uh, at a particular point which are hot spots and uh, kirti we been discussing about this also the hot spot could have environmental factors such as glare lack of uh, uh, you know in the nights you see the crossings most of them are ill lit some of the crossings are just after a hump uh, then in some of the places you don't have adequate uh, lanes being shown on the uh, for for the drivers so it's a multifactorial thing which ultimately leads to an accident it's not just a driver who is drunk who goes and has an accident because that same driver who is drunk might not have an accident in another place because the environment was better or more conducive uh, to his slow reflexes so i think uh, we have to look at it from a systems point of view and i quite agree with the previous observations i mean if you don't have payments you're going to have you go, you're going to have pedestrian deaths and if you go around sri lanka just after any of the towns some of the towns themselves don't have payments and we seem to think that drawing a white line on the road is a pavement and i think more than 95% of our roads have no pavements and uh, then to blame uh, the accidents Uh, on uh, only the drivers i think is is uh, that's not going to solve the issue so my plea is that we look at it from a more systems perspective look at the environmental flag factors which can easily be modified you know training drivers to drive well is a different ball game that is going to take another one year but if you are really if we identify the hot spots find out the factors which are there in the hot spots make minor changes to those areas uh, we i think there will be success uh, so that thank you very much um can i uh, chair person can i make a comment yes please go ahead i'm upul senarat uh, professor in community medicine uh, colombo faculty um 
Uh, actually, uh, when I uh, sort of listen to the, the national strategic plan, the, the target 10% uh, reduction in mortality or the number of deaths in five years or 10 years may not be adequate. If you are serious, now we all understood that uh, this is a, not an emergency, even a crisis, and this is the number one public health problem. Uh, but the attention on this problem is less compared to the other issues in the country. Uh, therefore, I think uh, if you look at uh, the size of the problem and it is impact, it is enormous. And only very few people, I think, uh, talk about this problem compared to the, the other uh, public health issues. Therefore, I suggest uh, there should be a, some sort of like, you know, a wider engagement of the, the stakeholders and also higher level of political support, especially if you are serious about it, this 10% uh, reduction, I think we should have a higher target because 10% reduction of deaths may not have any impact on the population, any impact on the, the health of the people uh, or the social aspects. Therefore, please uh, in, have a higher target so that uh, you have to get the, we can get the, uh, the high level political support in order to uh, uh, implement these activities. And I quite agree and all the spokesmen I think mentioned about the strict enforcement of law, there are many lapses and gaps violation, I mean, at every accident or every incident, there's breaching of regulations. So therefore, despite the road condition, despite the vehicle condition, right, there is some degree of violation of regulations. Therefore, enforcement is a must. If you want to even sustain a behavior, we have to keep the enforcement, strict enforcement over a period of time so that the behaviors will be institutionalized at least in the next generation. Education is important, but Without enforcement, nothing will happen in this country. Uh, this is my experience as a public health expert. So we have to have ex enforcement, but uh, uh, parallelly the education and other things, I think this were mentioned repeatedly, but the effort uh, by the, our uh, professionals or stakeholders or even political commitment towards this at the moment is inadequate because we have been talking this from 2015 under sustainable development goals to reduce the number of deaths by 50%. Now, five years have gone, six years, but hardly any improvement, so the deterioration of the situation. So at, even at this moment, even though we are late, I think we have to make very, I think, intensive effort with a lot of commitment. Thank you. My comments are over. Uh, thank you, Professor, for those comments. And thank you, uh, Professor Jaising, uh, for your comments as well. Yeah, can I come in? Yeah, I think uh, you are... You, uh, you, uh, I think not uh, to chat. That's right. So uh, I'm I'm from the UK. I'm a medic from UK. I I feel that it is absolutely paramount to educate the masses. If you take a uh, hundred drivers and ask them whether they should stop at a pedestrian crossing, most of them will say no. They 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 might say that you know they should drive on. So it is absolutely paramount to uh, how to simple messages, whether they should uh, be stopping at a pedestrian crossing, how they should overtake. If they are driving for longer hours, whether they should have rest. Sleep deprived driving is one of the main causes of, of uh, deaths from uh, lorry drivers, bus drivers, I had given a comment from uh, about a chap. I had a chat with uh, one of the drivers uh, who was driving to Jaffna. He drives for eight to ten hours to Jaffna, sleeps for two hours, drives back another ten hours. Absolute recipe for disaster. There should be laws enforcing that companies should ensure that long, long uh, distance drivers do have adequate periods of rest because they are paid by a number of hours, the number of the, the distance they drive. These are very simple things, alcohol and driving, monotonous driving, and uh, use of force. They, you can use the mass media, particularly TV, TV. You can put simple clips day in and day out to, uh, to, to uh, there are eight point, uh, 8 million vehicles. So every other family probably has got access to a vehicle one way or the other. It should be mass education on simple things is absolutely paramount in Sri Lanka. 
uh, and they should be bombarded daily, daily, so that this will drive into their brains that that simple good driving behavior is paramount to prevent any disaster. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, this is uh, Manjula De Silva, yes, uh, CEO of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce. Uh, uh, I think we had a very good uh, discussion uh, with a lot of valuable suggestions coming uh, from many uh, people. I uh, just want to make a couple of points. One is that I think we don't need to really debate a lot about whether it is infrastructure improvements or whether it's behavioral changes or uh, law enforcement or what, what is more important than the other. I think we need a combination of actions uh, here. In my opinion, I think you need like some short term actions, medium term and long term. This should all come within a national action plan, uh, so which has to be coordinated by a single agency. So this is something I think the government authorities who are present here will have to figure out who should be that one single agency who should drive this total agenda uh, within which I think there's a place for everything that we have spoken of today. Uh, and not that you know one is more important than the other. Uh, so I think it's also important to identify the causes of uh, the accidents, in particular the fatal accidents, by further analyzing the data that is available. Now, although many people commented about the deficiency of data, I can tell you as a person who has worked in the insurance industry for a, a good part of my career, uh, that there's a lot of info data available with the insurance industry. And, and I think one can analyze that data and from that, we should be able to get a fairly good picture of what are the main causes. And if I may just uh, uh, also like indicate a couple of causes uh, from sort of anecdotal experience, though I have not really analyzed the data uh, in great detail. I mean, some of these are uh, coming down to behavioral issues. Like now, if you take the number of people who are getting run over on pedestrian crossings, Right now, that has nothing to do with infrastructure. I mean, that is simply reckless driving. And 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 if you take also the number of cases where uh, buses have gone down to uh, uh, precipices and and off the road and caused severe accidents, it's because of people falling asleep uh, at the wheel. So I mean, like that. I mean, you know, you can identify some of the uh, key uh, uh, risk factors. I think the WHO. Uh, the doctor uh, uh, brought out some of these things like overspeeding, drunk and dangerous driving, helmets not worn, uh, not wearing seat belts, and uh, use of mobile devices. So, like that, I think we, we can identify a few such contributory factors and, and which can then be dealt with to bring about some quick wins. So, I mean, at the same time, I'm not undermining the importance of infrastructure changes and, and improving the vehicle standards and so on. But I think we just need a multiple uh, kind of multi-pronged approach dealing with all these issues and where the behavioral factors are also very, very important uh, if you really look at the causes of some of these accidents. Thank you. If I, can I uh, make a comment? Uh, yes, uh, Prasama. So I mean, thank you very much for everyone. I think uh, all this uh, basically uh, takes us so uh, links to a sort of a national agency because all the even the QA session, all the uh, individuals told this. So there has to be, I think, uh, a national agency where all these ideas, all what the various individual ministries do, and all uh, collaborations, and then as well as government strategies should come and be coordinated. So this is where our expert committee has been for some time sort of pushing for a presidential task force on road traffic injuries, not uh, sort of to establish another task force, but mainly to bring everyone together under one umbrella and then sort of make them work together. So uh, I am really, really, really happy that the honorable minister was sort of supportive to this idea. So we uh, sort of think as a committee, we will go and 
meet him as as he invited and then get his support and we get, get his sort of encouragement to establish this committee again don't misunderstand or anything so we through this committee we are not planning to initiate any new things but actually to bring everyone together and then have a discussion and have as again as someone pointed out have a national strategic plan say as as uh, someone from uh, the, the short term medium term and long term establish it and then without sort of changing it go till we basically uh, reduce these crashes so all the other side basically individual sort of opinions and ideas uh, all towards the reduction of crashes so definitely each of us including me will think one area is more important than the other and actually the research data also will show that area being important but what we are not doing is we are not coming to one table and then talking with each other uh, so that is what actually uh, our main plan also was at the beginning and uh, so because why a lot of uh, this uh, burden was not discussed today was we had a similar conference last year also in february before covid started so we didn't want to sort of have the same conference uh, and then uh, so they have we thought we will go a little sort of further and then have this kind of a discussion which i think was sort of okay and thank you very much for listening for samat uh, th thanks for your comments and uh, i know that you are working very hard uh, over the years at the lemme discussion of the crashes committee with this idea of uh, i mean getting all these sectors under one umbrella and uh, working you know under common agenda so i mean uh, all these years at at the lemme we were striving hard and uh, it seems that it's going to get uh, effective uh, in the the next uh, uh, maybe coming months or years any other comments from the speakers or queries to speakers so we wind up we got uh, one more item left uh, that used to be played kirti uh, are you ready to do that i mean uh, during the the q and a we can do that until tushar is uh, oh, yes professor yeah uh, hello yeah uh, kirti uh, if you can play it uh, from your side it's Sri Lanka we marga padhatiya eklas sa dasi das tunsi pamana we na marga padhati thula modra tapawan ko masar is karya le missing de das visvarsi December masa tis ekwana dina we na vanta wahana liya padin chola thi na laksa su dekha pamana in laksa hatari saya pamana thi ne yathuru padi eklos las asuda ha pamana सांख्यात्मक प्रमाण लोक सौख्य संविधान श्रीलंका 
पोलिस्तान हार से अनुतुलिम रातवाहन आंस पीहितो लती नो ये रातवाहन आंस वाला आमतर वो कोट्टा से रातवाहन आंस पीहितो लती नो ये वाकी में दिशा रातवाहन आंस पीहितो लती नो दैन तो मेरे रातवाहन से इस्ते संधा रातवाहन निर्दारी अट दास नामसिया पावन सीलंका पुलिसिया दीवार रात्रि राज्य कार्य दोनों विशेष ये ममी आनतुर वोल्ट बाजने में ने रीड्रो महतुन साहब अधिकार वांगे उसे लेके लिमा साहब परीक्षा कार्य साह अंतरादाय कल सरिया पदीवी में अधिक वेगे इन रिया पदीवी में ये वाकी में बीमत कम इन रिया पदी मोटर रात प्रवाहन को मसाले से कार्य आ रहे हैं ये वाकिम प्रवाहन आमात्या साल एक पर इधर ये दी अकुशलता लापुन क्रम में दी डी मेरी सिस्टम में का काटियो तो किरी मटर ये वाकिम पहासु वो साधा हाँ जाम ये दूर बाला पाते हैं लबागे नहीं में क्रम में दी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक क्रम में दी अशेन ऑनलाइन इसे क्या सि� अतिकारु जनादिपत्तु में आगे साउबागे वाद देखमान हुआ विनयगारु का गुनगारु का नीतिगारु का समाज या बिहिकरी में संधा विनयत अतिकरी में संधा हाँ मार्गेदी ये आकुसलता लाखों नोटी मेरी क्रमवेदिया इधर इधर क्रियात में के मतलब श्रीलंका पुलिसी बड़ा पड़ता है इवन इसा विशेष एम मैं वाइद्य संघ में विषय मैं वन लाभना मैं में क्रिया दामे दी चिलंका पुलिस ये बारा पुरुत्वी ने मार्गे बाविता करना ये दुरु महातुं पदिकारुवां पदिके इंसान मागी इंजान सिरु दिनाम विनय कारुकुआ नीति कारुकुआ मार्ग नीति वल्टा वन तेवला मार्ग सान्या वल्टा वन तेवला स्वान पालने किन मार्गे पाविच्च करनवाना एवा गेम थाना का कार्य त्वेंगे थोरो वाहन दावने करनवाना मार्ग आन तुरु आप खर्गे निवट है किया वत्ती मिल Rende ke ni jam ni? Anda pulang ni, pulang ni. Eh, tu kalau parti ni macam mana? Kalau parti ni anda. Kah parti? Kah parti ni high yang ni anda. Eh, tu high yang ni? Ia langit rende ni, ni dekat ni anda ni. Eh, tu ratu parti ni macam mana? Ratu parti ni polis rala mikir kini ada balala, netang yang ni dia. मार्ग सांझा एलिवल टे हिमात नेतम सिग्नल लाइट वाले टे हमें विले में की करवे मो नीति घर कुवे मो आनंदरू वाले को आई मुकदा अरे यारे आप ही यंग आप ही यंग ये कॉपी का मैं आप ही तो होंडा नहीं मु आई साथ दे हाँ पार वाले लोग रणवीर ने ने कौन गाना मार दिया था अतरु मार्गे के सिटे महामार्गे टे पासु पासु दावे निकली में वाला दाग नीति गारु कवे मो आने तुरु वाल कवे Mengapa betul ni? Itu mi apa gelar betul ni? Mama dah kuna ni awe. Itu apa dah kuna dah mai? Mama mana ter? Muka dia? Mansan dia kedit, water awam kedit, ubi dah kuna ni wahana itu ida deh. Ni itu garuk awam, anak tu rumah kamu. Indonesia 
ඊසර යක්කුව සීට් බෙල්ට් එක දාගන්න කියලා වාහනයක් පදවන විට විතරක් නෙවෙයි වාහනයක මගේ කැටිට යනකොටත් ආසන පටි සවි කරගන්න ආසන පටි සවි කරගන්නේ නීතියට බය වෙන්න පමණක් නෙවෙයි ආසන පටි සවි කරගන්නේ තමන්ගේ ආරක්ෂාව නීති ගරුක වෙමු අනතුරු වලින් වැළකෙමු thank you kirti uh, for playing that uh, short videos and it shows how much effort our volunteer organizations have taken to take this message uh, to the public with regard to road safety and from various angles doctor can, can i can i yeah, join you yeah come on uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity in fact uh, i think professor samat then uh, Dr. Tushar is there still there, I believe. Uh, what I thought of uh, uh, this, uh, during the height of the traffic, uh, we see a lot of uh, policemen there, you know, as uh, correctly said by uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, our DIG, uh, that there are, there's a huge scarcity of uh, police officers to, uh, you know, uh, uh i uh, put on the roads to uh, maintain this law and order and the traffic i see what we see is not me not me not only me i think we all see that see is that uh in front of uh, those uh, traffic lights we could, we could still see a policeman police officer standing there and directing the vehicles to uh, move around and in the event of uh, been uh, physically done there are a lot almost everybody i mean some are, i'm not saying uh, the majority but there are uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, motorists uh, they violate all the regulations in front of the uh, policeman and then eventually what will happen is to lose the respect of that police officer in future whoever comes because what police officer wants at particular moment is to clear the road and then in the in the event uh, the motorist will take the chance and even the bus drivers take the chance and they cut all the i mean straight lines and uh, you know they they violate the whole whole lot so i think this has to be stopped immediately if if a police officer there uh, it's we need to clear the road all right but at the same time or a more important to see that they follow the rules and regulations but it's not happening yet and it is very pathetic and also this part of the world i should say this part of the world our economy is not good at all then people the, the drivers have a lot of things in their mind not uh, focusing on driving so they have a lot of things in their mind they have they have to look after their family they have obligations and with all that they are driving so uh they are not addressing to the object objectiveness of it and then what will happen uh, most of the traffic accidents have occurred uh, because they are not focused and they are not taken the authority and the ownership so therefore as a country country people of the country i think we have not taken the authority in many many areas so that is the main reason what's why it's happening why it's lacking so i think we have to that I, I one one of the participants said about the education but i think i i don't think he came up with the correct uh, solution of that the education has to be that the take the ownership of this country that is very important what you do so therefore we are lacking on that so when we don't have that uh, you know uh, ways i mean we don't have the people living conditions are very much far below the requirement so uh, anybody you know want to go to their destination as fast as possible and rest there's no you know they are they are lacking in their uh, you know physical strength and uh, uh, then uh, uh, they they used to they, i mean if you are stopped there at one end you are you are wasting uh, fuel at all times so fuel prices are high so all this i mean your living conditions have uh, you know adversely uh contributed to this uh, bad manners and also uh which i am from the rotary uh, devadanapur and what i have uh, 
uh, one of uh, my colleagues have done the research and they have come to know most of these bus drivers about i should say about 70 percent of them have uh, either is not enjoying with their family life or their spouse have gone abroad to middle east and then they are left alone here and i have seen somebody has invited me to see i'm living in uh, Omagama, once I was asked to come to Potawa, uh, the bus stand, and in the early in the morning when I went, uh, I saw the bus driver is given a, uh, a, a milligram of uh, drugs, and he, has, he, he chewed that with the uh, beetle. So everybody, every every driver, most of the drivers are like that. They, they see only the, uh, the end of the day, cash, how the cash is given to the owner, and what is their commission or their salary. So I think the government, what the government should do, this transportation has to be taken by them or the private sector uh, shouldn't be given the authority to uh, buy vehicles through uh, these finance uh, organizations. It has to be given by the government at a very, very low rate or for that matter, no, no uh, interest at all. And to the salaries and uh, the profits and all to be shared by the government. And also, as uh, there was a, a, a lady uh, uh, who has commented that uh, we have to uh, uh, give 100% uh, uh, authority to the government sector and to see that it's going to take place rather than going this given to the public sector, sector where they don't have any education at all to look after or, or to go through the right way of doing uh, uh, doing the service. And also, uh, I, I should last, uh, I should say that uh, the Sendai framework, which was initiated by uh, the Disaster Management uh, Center and Disaster Management Ministry uh, from 2015 to 2030, in order to this reductions uh, sets of uh, setting of goals, and uh, it's a overall thing. It's not only uh, for uh, road safety. It is uh, 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 substantially reducing of uh, uh, disaster risks and uh, uh, losses in lives and livelihoods, em empower the livelihoods and health uh, uh, socio-economy, uh, physical, uh, uh, you know, physical structures and cultural uh, and uh, environmental uh, uh, assets of uh, uh, you know it's it's holistically made not only for Sri, only for Sri Lanka but it is it's for the whole the, the global uh, initiative and I think we should take that initiative and I can help you to uh, get that uh, also uh, because that will help us as to it, it is done by UN uh, uh, DRR United Nation Disaster Risk Reduction uh, Program. So we can uh, we can get that uh, educational uh, you know uh, as to how the uh, uh, knowledge transferring also to our uh, expert committee and also expert committee and also uh, to the uh, uh, to to make it happen and also to get to know as to what we should do uh, and thank you very much again. Uh, thank you, Kumar, for those suggestions. All are noted and. Uh... This whole uh, workshop is recorded at SLMA, so we should be able to um, work out with all the suggestions, uh, comments sent by uh, the participants, speakers. And uh, with that, uh, we'll wind up the Q&A session. And uh, it's 12.15 from 8.40. Uh, we were in this workshop for more than three and a half hours. Uh, very fruitful and very detailed knowledge was shared uh, from all the speakers. So let me very briefly summarize the, uh, the proceedings before we uh, move to the vote of thanks. We uh, commenced today's workshop uh, almost on time. Uh, and uh, Dr. Padma Ratna, the President of Sri Lanka Medical Association, introduced the meeting and welcomed the participants and introduced the problem of road traffic accidents and injuries and deaths. Then uh, the co-convener of the Prevention of Road Traffic uh, Crashes Prevention Committee and the President-elect of Sri Lanka Medical Association, Professor Sam 
highlighted the need for the meeting and introduced the participants. Dr. Ranjit Disanayaka, Secretary of the State Ministry of Rural Roads and Other Infrastructure, spoke then and introduced the government strategy uh, for the development of roads and associated action to reduce road traffic accidents during, during 2020 to 2024. The government is planning to rehabilitate 100,000 kilometers of rural roads, introduce a safe passageway, and address and develop uh, red and critical road sections between Anuradhapura and Padere. And he has given uh, very detailed insight about how these uh, strategies are devised and hope to uh, proceed in the uh, current uh, or the next couple of years. Then uh, Dr. Ziritunga spoke about the increasing need for more complete data and action to reduce, prevent, and control injuries and road traffic injuries and deaths. He was focusing on uh, the holistic approach to injury prevention, and as a part of it, uh, road traffic uh, injuries also should be uh, considered. And according to National Injury uh, Surveillance System, in 2017, 18, and 19, uh, road traffic incidents were 19% were the leading cause of hospital deaths due to injuries. Of all injuries, a significant proportion, 96%, were due to unintentional injuries. And 2018 and 2019, 17.4 total number of injury, injuries uh, were admitted as uh, road traffic accidents. And uh, <laughs> SDA's 50% uh, reduction of road traffic injury uh, is expected by 2030. Sri Lanka, uh, it is a 10% reduction, uh, is expected and introduced the main areas that are being targeted by the Ministry of Health for the effort for the prevention of this man-made epidemic. And it was later mentioned this 10% reduction uh, was uh, not adequate uh, during the, the Q&A comments. And Professor Srina Chansrekara uh, spoke uh, after that, uh, President College of Surgeons, and he mentioned the, uh, the, the requirement about attention uh, to uh, the prevention of road traffic accidents as injuries are a leading uh, cause of uh, casualties, and especially uh, in the uh, the 50th year on uh, road, uh, they, they said they will be uh, taking this as a major issue to confront with. And Dr. Krishnan Srinivasan, the consultant to World Bank, join us uh, from India. Many thanks, Dr. Krishnan, for your time and uh, effort, and you have provided a lot of details uh, about uh, the the region and Sri Lanka as well. With regard to fatal rate, worst in the region, uh, four to five times of best performing countries, and concern uh, regarding South Asia, 10% uh, world vehicles and 25% is here. And uh, high motorization rates, the numbers is not checked to 4,000 by 2025. And uh, you mentioned about the vehicle safety measures also are not of high standards uh, in the region. and. Uh, motorcycle and bicycle lanes uh, should be introduced uh, to improve the road safety. As far as national safety regulations are considered, a uh, road safety fund, results focused and data driven and establishing center of excellence are well than suggestions for Sri Lanka for reducing road injuries and deaths. I hope this will be uh, considered uh, positively in the future. And uh, Dr. Vishnu also, uh, went into a, or displayed the examples from India, Malaysia, and Indonesia, and Bangladesh as well, uh, regard to uh, using a dedicated uh, motor lines for the motorcycles and bicycles. Honorable Minister spoke about, uh, Mr. Uh, Dilum Amunugama uh, spoke next, and uh, uh, he actually uh, summarized the, the whole uh, requirement of uh, this uh, road safety uh, issue and especially highlighted the requirement of uh, bringing all these uh, sectors, stakeholders working on road safety or prevention of road traffic uh, crashes uh, under one umbrella. He uh, several times mentioned that we need to uh, create a presidential task force of the institution. Uh, so it's a very positive note, uh, Minister ended his speech that uh, we need to uh, increase collaboration between the stakeholders in this uh, the whole field. And uh, he also mentioned about the measures or lack of prevention and majority of actions uh, after the 
uh, taken after the accident. But in future, the prevention uh, is uh, more uh, focused and uh, all uh, the infrastructure facilities or infrastructure developments uh, with regard to road safety uh, will be developed or will be uh, aimed at uh, this particular focus. Uh, our brand ambassador uh, on uh, prevention of road traffic crashes by SLAV spoke next on driving techniques and uh, its requirement for drivers in Sri Lanka and he has given into some individual points uh, and very, uh, they were very well taken by the audience and we have seen a lot of comments on the chat uh, while Dilanta was speaking and uh, especially regarding the application of brakes, traction control and seat belts and which will be very, very helpful uh, in our uh, future strategies and especially the programs uh, which are, are taken to the public. And Dr. Ajit Rona, the DHE uh, legal as usual uh, provided a lot of details, uh, data with regard to uh, road traffic accidents from the police perspective and uh, mentioned about the uh, alarming figures of uh, road traffic deaths. Uh, and uh, he was mentioning about some of the deaths which happened during the, uh, the last 24 hours and uh, comparing some of the data uh, in the last week. And he has given details about the uh, number of vehicles in the country in 1951 and now 2021 and the alarming figures and increasing number of uh, motor cycles and the three wheelers in the country and how uh, we have to deal with all this, uh, especially during the uh, police uh, services. And he also mentioned about uh, the, the developments uh, especially taken uh, in the, uh, the legal sector with regard to legislation, the changes of legislation which happened in 2019, 2017, 2009, in, in the recent period, and how important these uh, amendments are, and especially about the, the demerit system of uh, points uh, introduced to the driving license for the, uh, the drivers and its uh, value of uh, improving and uh, applying it island wide. And then, uh, Mr. Kirti uh, Kodituwa, our engineer uh, from the Effective Solutions, speak on uh, the especially the new tools uh, they developed to uh, map the, the road traffic accidents very quickly and to report to the relevant authorities. He displayed it uh, with the, uh, the tools on the screen. And uh, Dr. Virginia Mandavarachi uh, from the WHO. Uh, National uh, Professional Officer of NCD spoke about the WHO strategy for prevention of uh, road traffic uh, injuries. Uh, and uh, this aspect was dealt by uh, many other speakers previously as well. And she actually uh, mentioned about this, uh, especially uh, multi sectoral strategic plan for 2021 to 2025 and the importance of. Uh, adhering to uh, these uh, major uh, major aspects of this plan and uh, five risk factors uh, she uh, introduced uh, were taken and the whole stack approach again was mentioned by uh, her as well. And then we came to the uh, Q&A session and there were a lot of comments uh, from uh, not only from our local participants, there were participants from Japan and UK as well. And thank you all for your comments and uh, we were able to get views about how those countries were able to uh, deal with this uh, road safety aspect. And uh, many other comments were also shared about how to improve the, the road safety and prevention of uh, road traffic accidents uh, in the uh, country as well. And uh, we were able to share some of the, the videos produced uh, with regard to uh, the public awareness programs uh, uh, before we uh, end the session. So it's all in all, I believe it's a uh, very well uh, run program, although we are a little behind the time, but there are a lot of inputs and a lot of details were discussed and a lot of insights were uh, shared. And uh, there are many uh, future uh, objectives were also uh, discussed. So let me invite uh, Dr. Dushara, our energetic uh, convener of the prevention of road traffic crash uh, committees of the SLMA uh, to uh, provide a lot of thanks. Dr. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, it's my duty to uh, give away a word of thanks. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, 
Council of the Sri Lanka Medical Association uh, and the president uh, of SLMA, Dr. Mrs. Padma Gunaratna, for giving us this uh, opportunity to organize this uh, very important workshop. Uh, on behalf of expert committee of on uh, prevention of road, road traffic crashes of SLMA, I would like to thank Honorable Minister, Honorable State Minister, Mr. Dilan, Dilum Amurugaman, his uh, coordinating secretary, uh, for joining us at this as a uh, chief guest. So next, uh, I would like to thank uh, all the guests speakers, local as well as the overseas uh, speakers for their valuable uh, uh, presentations and they shared with us the, their expertise. So I would like to uh, thank all the participants uh, from uh, overseas and uh, local organizations individually and uh, 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 many various organizations. So. At last, not least, I would like to thank uh, our own uh, the SLMA expert committee, PRTC, uh, all the organization, uh, the chairperson, uh, Professor Samat, uh, co-chairpersons, uh, co Professor Samat and uh, Professor Clifford uh, Perra uh, for their uh, encouragement and guidance. So I would like to uh, thank uh, all the members of the committee. And especially I would like to uh, mention about uh, the service organization uh, like uh, uh, Rotary and Lions for their uh, support. So uh, I apologize if I couldn't mention any uh, person, uh, person's name or the organization. Uh, uh, who, those who have contributed to uh, today's workshop. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zishara, for uh, giving a lot of thanks. And uh, that brings us the, uh, to the end of today's workshop. We started, as I said earlier, around 8.40, and we almost now at 12.30. So nearly four hours we were discussing about uh, the strategies uh, to achieve road safety in Sri Lanka. Uh, and a lot of knowledge we shared and most of the knowledge we knew earlier. But we, I think, uh, as mentioned by many speakers, the, the focus is to uh, collate all this knowledge and uh, come under one umbrella and work together of achieving road safety in Sri Lanka. So in that respect, the Sri Lanka Medical Association as the apex body of all medical doctors in Sri Lanka has taken a giant step by collaborating with all these sectors involved and with the political uh, the leadership, uh, we should be able to reach the target in the future, hopefully. So thanks very much again uh, with uh, Professor Samad Dharmaratna, my co-convener uh, of the Prevention of Road Traffic Crashes Committee of the SLMA. Uh, thank you all for joining us today, spending your whole morning session in this uh, Saturday uh, uh, weekend uh, for this uh, to discuss our joined for this discussion on this very important topic, Sri Lanka. Thank you all.